There we go. Thank you so much for that, Beth. I truly appreciate you letting me know. Hello, everyone. Today is, uh, what is it, January 5th? Normally, before the show starts, what we do is we just kind of give everyone an opportunity to say hello in the chat and do their little thing. But today we actually have some viewer submitted questions and we have some questions that have been sent in by patrons. We had a couple of patrons who either didn't have the time to get on the phone or didn't have the interest in getting on the phone, but they still wanted to have their questions answered. Hello, Tia Zaida. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we got a talk this week. I'm looking forward to it too. I actually started getting some of the notes together for our talk that we're going to be having. And uh, I'm kind of excited because the things I'm talking to you about are actually the same things that I need to start doing here in Bakersfield. So it's going to be a really, really good uh, way to flush out all our ideas. But as I was saying, normally we just kind of uh, sit here and we just kind of hang out and we talk about things. But the show is so full tonight that we're actually going to be doing the question and answer for the patron questions right now. So if you have any questions, you're welcome to submit them in and anything we don't get to before the show, we're gonna go ahead and get to after the show starts. And if we need to, we're gonna go extend it because I have a lot of items over here. Uh, here, I'll tell you what, I'll even move the camera. And I usually don't do it with this camera, but if you wanna take a look, let me see if I can get a little slack over here. Look at all these items that I have. Yeah, and there's some, uh, some portraits and stuff, but I have, four bins worth of items that I actually have to go through. So it's gonna be a little crazy. Hold on, let me get this little gyroscope back to where it needs to be. It's it's looking in the wrong direction now. Sorry, guys. There we go. It has a uh, special balancing element in there and sometimes it gets a little bit wonky on me. But yeah, so what we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna we're just gonna answer some of the questions that we had sent in. So hello to everyone. I will give all the hellos as we get a little bit closer to the top of the hour. The first question that came in this week was, where do you get the best deals on poly bags? And this is a great question, actually. Uh, I kind of want to explain my process of how I buy poly bags. And those of you who don't know what poly bags are, they're essentially these. These are uh, they're they're really thin. Uh, polyurethane, polyplastic material. Uh, they can they come in a range of thicknesses. I try and get the thicker ones. You want something that's thick enough that you can't see the word priority through it. Don't ask me why. But you're gonna want something with a little bit of weight. It's gonna hold up a little bit better. It's gonna prevent you from having to double up. But the process that I use is somewhat unique. What I'll do is I'll, I will, first I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at a few things. I'm gonna look at the cubic chart. I wanna see what the maximum dimensions are for each bag shape. I believe one of the tiers breaks out at 21 inches. So I'm gonna ask myself, and that's length plus the width. So I'm gonna ask myself, based on my inventory, my personal needs, what is the maximum size I can get that would satisfy that amount? If I can get a 10 by 11, or if I could get you know, an, an eight by you know, 13, or whatever it might be, that best suits my inventory, that's what I'm gonna be going for. Now, the thing is, you can't just go to eBay and say, I want a 12 by 13 poly bag it might not even exist in those dimensions. But what I'll do from there is I will go to valuemailers.com and it has a list of all of the different sizes of poly bags. And then I can figure out what are common and popular and produced sizes of poly bags. So if I get to the site and it says, oh, the closest one to the size you're looking for is a nine by 11, I'll then take that information, go straight back to eBay and I will search for a nine by 11 on eBay. Price plus shipping lowest first, buy it now format. And if you have it, eBay coupons, eBay cash back, your 2% on your uh, your PayPal or your debit or credit, whatever cash back you're getting. Uh, use your honey discount, save even more money that way. But drive those costs down as far as you can. But just remember, don't, don't spend money on these if you plan to ship it out priority. If you're going to be doing priority, there's the priority tie back. Okay, and you can use those. These are almost always reserved for larger than the Tyvek mailer and or first class shipments. So hopefully that answers that question for you. Uh, and then also in regards to cubic tiers, remember there's a maximum on the cubic size. So you don't wanna get something that's so big you can't even ship it cubic. And I believe the maximum is 36 inches, which would be an 18 by 18 poly bag, which is kind of hard to come by, but uh, you can get them for almost like 80 cents each and with those we're talking like large pillows uh, oversized stuffed animals stuff to that effect that would go in something of that size uh, one of the other questions that we got was uh, how can i track 
uh, my sales across Mercari and eBay. And uh, this person was asking for essentially a bookkeeping type question. Now, when it comes to managing your sales on Mercari, it is a little bit of a nightmare. They're, they're not built the same way that eBay is built. As of right now, the, the professional opinion on eBay or the way that they're suggesting that sellers do it on the platform is to download quarterly reports. The reports go back three months. They say every three months, like clockwork, you should pull your reports down to be able to keep track of your sales. The logistics are even getting more confusing when it comes to your W-2 from PayPal, your tax omissions, and stuff like that. I would strongly recommend try and get a CPA or be very accurate as far as what you are doing, what you're buying, what you're selling. Now, I can't sit here and I can't you know, give you color as far as how... The, you know, the IRS and the government are going to look at these things, but I do want to tell you, a lot of people will be getting it wrong this year, even those who are trying very hard because there's just so much going on. I do personally believe there will be some type of simplified filing process in the future for contractors. It's just not something that we have as of now. As far as how to keep track of your Macari sales, I would say keep a ledger going. Open up a Google Docs, make a spreadsheet, keep track of what you're selling, when you sold it, how much you sold it for, what you paid for it, your actual fees that you paid on it, your actual shipping that you paid on it, and keep track of it that way. I can't really think of anyone that's moving an insane amount of volume on Mercari where the logistics just don't make sense to manage it yourself. Next question in was, when is it wrong to offer free shipping? And this is a great question to ask as well. And we are also open for questions right now if anyone wants to submit any. The question was, when is it wrong to offer free shipping? Well, when you have a really expensive item, and uh, that's one of the examples. So if you have, let's say, an oversized framed piece that's going to sell for $2,000, okay? The person who's gonna pay $2,000 will most likely not balk at the idea of having to spend an extra $150 on shipping. Generally, when it, especially when it comes to oversized, I will say that people understand that there's a cost that comes with having to put it on a pallet, having to strap something down, having to have a private courier handle the package, uh, pack and ship services and different stuff to that effect. People understand that there's some heavy cost associated with doing all of these things. So what I would say to you is if you feel like your item is of the luxury style, of the oversized style, of you know, the high value style where somebody would be willing to pay that, go ahead and charge it, okay? When we're talking about your everyday items, you know, vitamins, makeup, locks, clothing, nonsense like that, most people, the average consumer, is going to expect to not have to pay for shipping on those types of things. But we will be talking about the retail standard moving forward here during the show today. But uh, yeah, those are some of the questions that we had submitted. Let's go ahead and get some hellos out for everyone, and then uh, we're gonna be talking uh, about some other stuff, I guess. Yeah, it's been an interesting week this week. So hello to everyone out there today. We have a tinier audience than usual. Don't ask me why, but we have a tinier audience than usual. I think it's because I forgot to run the, the thumbnail, letting people know that we're doing a show again on Sunday, like every Sunday. So music is a little too loud. Here, let me pull that back a little bit. Is that better? Let me know how that works out for you. You know, it could be it could be that my mic isn't high enough either. I have my mic turned down a little bit. How is that coming in for you now? But uh, yeah, let's get our hellos out. Hello again to you, Beth. Thank you for dropping in as always. Uh, hello to you, Zyda. Happy to have you too. Uh, FGS, thank you again for your continued support as well. Mr. Eberhart. The celebrity in the house. He's uh, he's been getting uh, very famous ever since that Mercari video that we did together. Uh, Mr. Exquisite present. Happy to have you, buddy. Thank you again for your continued support as well. And Pam's Flip Life. Hello to you, Pam. Hopefully everything's been going in good in the world of Instagram for you. Instagram and Mercari. I got actually got a bunch of Mercari items today, and it's almost a weird thing to say that I'm buying specifically to place onto Mercari, but I, I guess it makes sense in the scheme of things that uh, some of the stuff I'm buying already is either going to eBay or going to Amazon, so I guess it's not that ridiculous to start buying specifically for Mercari. 
And uh, my Mercari sales have been fantastic, too, over the holidays. But uh, I hope everyone had a good holiday sales season as well. And this mic is dirty. But yeah, how, how is everyone doing out there in La La Land right now? Make believe land, the world of the internet. Maui Delights. Hello to you, Maui Delights. Happy to have you as well. We are eight minutes out from the top of the hour. If anyone has any reselling or life-related questions, feel free to ask them. I'll be happy to answer them. You know what we should do? I should put on my computer glasses and then the next person, okay, this will be, be between me and you. The next person to jump in will be like, Jay, when did you start wearing glasses? And we'll just kind of mess with somebody. There we go. All oh, these need to be cleaned. Let's see, Daniel, 2,500 in the audience, listed for the first time on Mercari this past week. I like the platform. Daniel, let me ask you, did you start on Mercari because of us? Did you give it a shot uh, because of our discussions regarding Mercari? Because we've actually had a lot of people who've come to the table who said, yeah, you know, I've, uh, I wasn't considering doing it before, but after you guys talked about it so much, I thought I'd give it a try. Had a nice spark in sales after Christmas. Me too. I'm actually surprised with how good things are going. I'm kind of curious. And this is what's always tricky is, are we doing something correctly? Are we doing something right? Or is, or is eBay pressing the cash button and uh, pushing more sales out for us through Google advertising? That's the real question somewhat and the ebay app is def clunky in comparison yes it really is uh, i actually have a video that i want to work on but it's a very very big video and we're going to be talking about the best ebay app never made and i'm going to be doing like animation and all that stuff but man our funding is it's rough right now we lost a couple of people and uh we're a little bit softer than where we need to be coming into 2020 happy 2020 to everyone as well Lee James says, eBay bucks came out this week. I got a lot of eBay bucks. I got $23 worth of eBay bucks. And that has to do with that Tokidoki buy that I did. I used some of that money to cover my tax on my shipping supplies. Those of you who have eBay stores, don't forget to go redeem your shipping coupons before they expire at the end of the quarter. And yes, Pam is, uh, Pam is actively putting up the links right now for our Bolorama Facebook group, as well as our Bolo Mercari group. If you haven't joined the Bolo Mercari, we would love to have you. It's being ran by Pam and Richard uh, currently, and uh, we would love to have some new faces. So if you're selling on Mercari, or if you thought about selling on Mercari, and you're looking for a place to go to, there you go. And if you're just a general reseller, or if you're thinking about becoming a reseller, then check out our main page, our uh, Bolorama uh, page on Facebook. Both of the links are in the comments right now. If you guys haven't done so, don't forget, I hate I hate to ask this of you, do me a favor and like the video. Uh, it really helps out with the search engine and the algorithms and everything. We've been getting a little bit of a bump lately. YouTube has noticed some of our content. And uh, I've also, just for the sake of transparency, uh, we were doing so good with our last video as far as acquiring new subscribers and uh, getting great conversion that we actually spent a little bit of money on advertising to drive up the views even further. Because we just we know with what we're doing here that if we can just introduce people to the content that we're making and the quality of the content that they will stay, uh, they will enjoy it, and it's just about getting new people to come on over. So, yeah. Oh, and if you haven't heard yet, we have new shirts. We have a uh, Bolorama Patron Lounge, uh, or Bolorama, uh, you know, uh, if you don't make that money, someone else will, shirts available now, and uh, they're cheap. We make almost nothing on them. Uh, they're $14. You will not find a cheaper shirt from any other person out there, but they're only $14, and uh, you can get one. You can spread the Bolorama name, and if you see somebody else wearing one, tell them hello. Tell them hi. Tell them it's, uh, you know, nice to meet a fellow reseller. Um, hello to you, Pat the Reseller. Happy to have you as well. But yeah, hope everyone is doing good. 
I'm, I'm going to take these off because I'm not going to do this for the entire uh, show. I probably should, though. I don't know. I don't want to, uh, I don't want people expecting that of me every week that I'm going to look that good with these glasses on. Two sales since you went live going to keep you on as long as possible. You know, people tell me that. They tell me that they come watch the show and they start getting sales. And it always makes me happy. I had one right before the show started. I sold something for 11 bucks and I didn't even go check what it is yet. Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo. Now, you guys know I constantly talk about diversity, diversifying your portfolio and the types of items that you're selling in particular. I want you to tell me if you have ever seen such variety across six items, okay? Look at this. We've got we've got a Super Nintendo game, we have a pregnancy pillow, we have a Tamagotchi, we have a trading card, some replacement parts for a board game, and a sealed video game down there at the bottom. That is some diversity. Now obviously you can kind of bundle them all into the collector's vintage-esque niche for most of them, but you gotta, you gotta stay diverse. Buy a little bit of everything. And thank you, Beth. I appreciate that. Guys, we're two minutes out. Holy cow. This caught up to me quickly. I guess we have to start working here soon, right? Those of you who haven't done so yet, please like the video. It does help us out. And if you'd like to support the show, visit one of the Patreon links. Patreon.com backslash Bolarama will give you your opportunity to help support our show and make it possible. We're missing out on tons of funding right now. We lost a handful of patrons. And, uh, you know, people ask me, they're like, you know, uh, you know, why do people come and go? And I just tell them, you know, we... You know, the most common reason why people leave is because the husband got a better job, believe it or not. You know, the, the wife was doing supplemental income or people move and they say, well, you know, I moved and I don't know if I want to keep reselling, which makes no sense to me at all. I don't understand how a move could cause you to just not want to do your business anymore, but, uh, you know, teach their own or, you know, it's unfortunate every now and then we get the people who just, uh, you know, they decide that they're they're not going to succeed and uh you know those who do stick to the i don't want to call it a program those who stick to the process are going to be successful within this industry but uh, you know i've met people from years of doing hiring and running different companies that once a person has made that decision that they are not going to make it that is not going to work for them there's nothing you can say or do to change that that is set in stone they've made that decision for themselves just in the same way that a person must decide for themselves that they are going to be successful they don't make that decision there on their own doesn't mean anything so i don't know sometimes we lose people because of that and that's always unfortunate when somebody has decided that they're going to fail sales down 87.2 percent from the previous 30 days it's unfortunate made it barely money from mars happy to have you man uh, always good to have you in. Hopefully this uh, earlier time helps you out as well. Uh, haven't seen you in a minute, so uh, yeah. Oh man, I guess we have to do this show. I guess it's that time. Thank you to the 30 of you who've taken the time to be here tonight. It's always appreciated. eBay is really kicking it, I'll tell you. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> I don't know if you mean that in a good way or a bad, but, uh, you know, eBay is going to do whatever eBay is going to do. Let's go ahead and get this party started. What is going on, guys? forgot about that meme that I had out. This is Jay Craft with the Facebook group Bowl Around Pickers Lounge, and I'm coming at you live from beautiful Bakersfield, California. Today is January 5th, 2020, and I have a huge show in store for you. Unlike the likes of any show that you've seen previously anywhere on YouTube, reseller or not, I'll tell you right now, this is going to be a big one. Today, we're going to be talking about Jordan Sweetham. Uh, eBay VP returning to the platform and answering your questions. He did an AMA on the community boards and we've got his answers here and we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about it and my thoughts personally, which let's be honest, guys, 
Okay, You can get the news anywhere, but you come here because you want my opinion, or at least you want somebody to agree with your opinion. Am I right? We're going to be talking about that. On top of that, we're going to be talking about some scams that I want you all to be aware of in 2020. Believe it or not, uh, we get people every day sending us messages asking, you know, hey, is this real? Should I do this sale? What do I need to know? We're going to talk about a couple of the new scams that have been coming to the market that I've dealt with personally as well as seeing other people deal with. So that way, hopefully you don't have to deal with them too. We're also going to take a peek at eBay's biggest sales over the year of 2019. Is it going to help you any at all with your sales? No, but it's going to be interesting details to know. And not every single story has to be a heavy one. And on top of that, we're going to be talking about USPS and their plans, potential plans to privatize as early as this month. Jay, your ticker on the bottom is from last show. Yes, it is. Holy cow. You know, I actually, I'm running so late. I forgot to even update that. Uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We'll just, we'll just turn the bad boy off for tonight. Cause I, I, I don't, I don't think I'll have the ability to, uh, to get it corrected before the show ends. So, uh, maybe we can even crop it up to, Hmm. No, no, we're just going to leave it empty for tonight and just continue going on. But thank you so much for noticing that. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who took the time to be here tonight. I apologize for the late notification for those of you uh, who aren't following our Facebook groups. We do this every single Sunday, so I didn't get a chance to put up the notification online until just an hour or two ago. I completely forgot. It's been a crazy week for me personally. I've been going through a heck of a lot. Those of you who know me best know some of the challenges that I've been going through. I've been dealing with some uh, relationship type stuff. I've been going through some uh, issues with rent. I've been uh, working out whether or not I'm going to be staying here for another couple of months, another year, or maybe even two years. And we might be coming full circle on that topic again as well. But uh, those of you who did come in, because you know this is just what we do every week, I want to thank all of you as well as our admins who have been helping and supporting the show the whole way through and through. Thank you to you, Richard. Pam, Mindy, and Brandy for helping us with what we do. And a big thank you to, again, to everyone that is here today with us. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and uh, give a thank you to the patrons, and then we're going to get straight in on our news. Uh, Oh, actually, I got one more thing before that even. So I'll tell you what, let's put that away for a second. So normally... Um, let's do this way and I'm going to turn off the news ticker here too. Okay. So normally before we tear into the news, I like to talk about something, just anything. And if you missed the pre-roll, normally we don't do anything this week. We answered some viewer questions. Now during our show, you're always welcome to ask questions, but there was a question in particular, uh, or a comment that was left with me via DM today before the show. And I had informed the gentleman that I would probably talk about it on air today. And that was regarding associative cost with what you do, because I have four bins worth of inventory over here. And I threw out a number of what I spent on everything and how much I plan to make. And he said, well, what about this cost, this cost, and this cost that comes along with it? So I've gone to the swap meet three days in a row. The exact same swap meet three days in a row. The first day I went there, I cleared one row, okay? Because I stopped and I talked and I built contacts. I met a gentleman who is uh, in possession of three 10 by 20 storage units down in the LA area. If you're in the LA area and you wish to work with me on this, we can make thousands of dollars working in these units. My contact has fallen through as far as my guy with the trailer who would want to work stuff like this. I've seen this guy's stuff. It's really, really good. It's more inventory than I can take on on my own. Reach out to us on Instagram if you want to work with me on it. I'd be happy to. It's a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of good stuff, okay? But the first time I went, went to just a couple of booths, Uh, And it was a night swap meet. We went Friday night. I was there for maybe about two hours. I still got a bin full of stuff. Thrilled. Went back the next day on Saturday. And on Saturday, I was only there for about two and a half hours. And then Daniel said he was done. Now, Daniel's my roommate and I take him to the swap meet. This, this, I'm going to call him a boy in this reference. This boy goes far too quick when he goes to the swap meet. 
because he's in front of me the whole way. I just let him run off and do his own thing. And I'm doing my own thing as we're walking around. And this guy passes up so much stuff. And we even talk about visiting the same booth together, but he just will not slow down. And this is something that I have to emphasize. If you've taken the effort to get to where you're going to be buying, continue with that level of effort moving forward. Okay. And what I mean by that is you took the time to get, get up out of bed, get dressed, get in the car, spend your gas, get there, get to the booth, talk to the person. Why aren't we converting the rest of the way? If there's a bin full of items you've never seen before, you should be looking up each and every item so that you know what they're worth. Okay. It's 2020. I can't even make assumptions about items. Okay. The number of items I've gotten wrong over the last year is frankly disgusting. Okay. Things that I looked at and I assumed were worthless. And I even had to ask myself the other day when I was at one of the thrift stores, I said, am I getting worse at what I am doing or is the market getting worse? Okay. Because I was going through these stores. I'm like, man, I'm not finding anything. And then I asked myself, I'm like, how hard am I really looking? Am I looking for the surface level stuff, the easy stuff, video games and uh, just obvious collectibles and obvious toys and stuff like that? Or am I actually still willing to do the hard work and look up things that I don't know, even if my own judgment tells me that they might be worthless? So slowing down is important. One of my biggest items of Christmas 2019 was an item that I wouldn't have even looked up if it hadn't been for my ex-girlfriend handing it to me. She hands it to me and she said, hey, is this worth anything? And we're talking about the Beanie Baby tag protectors. I bought, uh, I ended up buying... 40 boxes of 12 and in those boxes of 12 each package is worth $20 okay and those 40 boxes cost me $1 each I've sold thousands of dollars worth of those since they were handed to me and why because I looked them up six seven years ago and they were worthless then and I was literally only entertaining the idea of looking them up to be a nice person just be like, you know, yeah, 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 you know, you want, because you want to support a new reseller coming out into the market and they find something and they're excited about it. You want to stop and you want to look it up. And that's really what opened my eyes up again and said, you know what? I need to slow down. I am not good enough. After doing this 10 years, I am not good enough to be making those assumptions. It's just not. So at the swap meet, I slowed down a lot and we're going to be seeing some really, really interesting items, uh, time provided. And I'm going to do my best to try and get to them, but we're going to be looking at some great items. And he had asked, he said, Jay, well, what's your other cost? And, uh, you know, cause we talk about the successes that people have. And just recently this week, I posted up an item that I said I would never buy again. And, uh, Mr. I believe his name's Fusco commented and he said, Hey, it's good to see the negative perspective. And I guess I wanted to explain my associative cost when it comes to going to the swap meet. Uh, I don't eat at the swap meet. I bring my own water. I bring Kleenex and hand sanitizer. I literally need nothing when I am there. Uh, a good trip there will take anywhere between two to three hours. Dan like I said, Daniel rushes. So I'll leave quicker today. I only had two and a half hours because I had to get back and pay my rent. Uh, but that's the thing. There's no extra cost for me once I'm there. I have my actual gas cost, which is over and back, which is about three bucks. And then I have my admission cost, which is anywhere between a buck to two bucks, depending on the day of the week. My total cost is $5. And when I eat here, I don't even spend much money on food. Okay. Very, very, very cheap food budget. So my cost of doing business going to the swap meet is essentially nothing. It's $5. But in the grand scheme of things, when we're talking about spending a hundred bucks or 150 bucks on four bins worth of goods worth anywhere between 1200 and $1,500. Okay. If your concern is the cost associated with going and doing the work, you're not doing the work correctly. Okay. I've never once stopped and felt like I needed to factor in how much money I was spending at the swap meet. Even if I was to buy lunch there, every time I go, I am coming home with hundreds of dollars worth of free profits, hundreds Okay. If you're not going to swap meets in your area, you're missing out on tons of money. Okay. That's a big, big thing to understand, but that's the thing about it. Okay. Lowering your cost is the same thing as making money. A dollar saved is a dollar earned. Don't feel like just cause you're out, you got to buy a drink at the swap meet or you got to buy a $6 lunch at the swap meet. 
you know, when I go out out of town once, I'll pack a sandwich with me. I don't care. You know, it's all about increasing those margins and saving the money is one of the best ways to do that. And those of you who know me personally in my real life, you'll know I am exceptionally frugal. You know, the only place that I've ever really spent money was on this because, uh, you know, the quality of everything, you know, people are more willing to listen when they're hearing things uh, coming in better quality, better visual quality, better audio quality and stuff like that. So I wanted to share that with you, you know, keep your costs low, but at the same time, Don't let it be a consequence that's going to keep you from going and doing your job. Because I'll tell you right now, you can sit here all day long and give me reasons as to why you are incapable of going and making money. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, okay? I can go from $0 to $100 within one day, okay? You start me with nothing, zero, Okay. And I'll, I'll go to the swap meet and dig through their, you know, the trash bins are literally throwing away things that I could sell every day. Okay. And I can go from zero to a hundred. I'll go restore people's headlights at the gas station and get some seed money to get started. And this is a video that we do plan on doing. I do plan to go from zero to a hundred and then from a thousand to, or from a hundred to probably a thousand across the course of seven days. So it's going to be something fun to see, but that'll be when the time comes. Let's go ahead and uh, get our thank you out of the way. I want to give a big thank you to all of our patrons for being here and supporting our show, but an extra special thank you to Michelle, Zyda, Pam, Matthew, Ashley, Anna and Joe, Lee James. I can't read that from here. Brandy, Rob, and John, our newest patron. So thank you to all of you. Let me back this chair up a little bit. I'm trying to get comfy, guys. I'm trying to cross my legs and be comfy in this chair because I'm going to be here for a minute. But a big thank you to all of our patrons for helping make this show possible. Without you guys, we just simply wouldn't be here. If you'd like to support the cause, please visit patreon.com backslash Bolarama. We lost two patrons last month. Huge hit to our bottom line. If you'd like to come fill in that gap, it would mean a lot to us coming into 2020. We have a lot of big projects planned and we would love your support. That being said, guys, let's move on to our top top news story of the day. We're going to be talking about the five questions answered by eBay's new VP. Who is Jordan Sweetnam? You might ask. Jordan Sweetnam is the senior vice president and general manager of the America's market at eBay. And I thought it was going to be somewhat relevant to understand his previous history with eBay and what he has done in between. Now, just coming off of doing his work at Walmart. He spent three years and four months there as their customer experience and product management. Now, when we talk about Jordan Sweetnam, I want you to just understand he is going to be taking somewhat of the middle position in the same way that Devin Wenig did. Now, Devin Wenig was obviously the CEO of the company, but this guy is coming in here to kind of act as the voice, the forward voice of the company to answer some of those hard questions that seemingly weren't answered historically and kind of give eBay more of a human face than it's had previously. Now, when he was working at Walmart, he was uh, working with the analytics and product management team that were focused on delivering amazing customer experience when shopping at walmart.com and online grocery at home. This gentleman has a history and a pedigree of working within the e-commerce space with large brands. You know, Walmart is Absolutely huge. Now, before that, he was the vice president of seller experience at eBay. He'd done that from 2014 to 2016. And he said that uh, he was there to increase the uh, success on eBay's global marketplace, oversee development strategy, delivery of tools and services. And before that, he had spent another 10 years. And hello to you, Lake Tahoe, Jim. Thank you for being here. Uh, Before that, he had spent 10 years as the senior director of business management and product marketing, again, for eBay and the North America's markets. He was responsible for managing the buyer experience, regional planning and business operations, as well as looking over eBay. Bay Canada. Uh, and then before that, he was doing uh, more work as a, as a senior director of the buyer experience, specifically with eBay. So at this point, he's kind of stepping back into a role that he had held uh, previously. And it's important to understand that this isn't somebody new to eBay. This is somebody returning to eBay. And some of his questions and some of his answers and statements regarding the questions that were sent to him really do reflect that. So what happened was that the eBay community page, and if you haven't visited community.pages.com, it's where 
people like me and you can submit questions to the community and say, hey, can we get some answers to our questions? And it can range from everything like, what do I do with the scammer? Or what is going on with the way that you changed how t-shirts are sold on the website? But this time, the community stepped forward and one of the admins said like, hey, we're doing this special event. Here's your opportunity to ask a question to a senior member of eBay staff, lucky us, and the most popular questions by vote of the users will be answered. And originally it was set to be five questions. I'm sorry, guys, my internet's dropping a little bit. Originally it was set to be five questions, but it looked like it was moved up to 10 questions. We have about eight or nine answers for you in total, but we are stepping through every single question that was asked. We're gonna talk about the answers and we're gonna give a little bit more context and my own personal flavor as far as what I feel about that. Now, originally there was 91 asked, and like I said, we only have about uh, eight or nine available right now. The information that you're gonna be provided with right now is a culmination of the information on the community uh, page as well as the eBay for business podcast where he had ap appeared on there in audio form to uh, speak and add a little bit of additional information to the questions. But, you know, I'll be honest, I listened to a 30 minutes worth of it till he uh, took off the air. He didn't really add much that wasn't already in the community pages. Now, if you would like to read the actual transcript of this, the link for that will be available on our Facebook business page at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, just about an hour or two, I believe, somewhere in there, but you'll see it on that page tonight, so if you want to click over there and check it out. Now, one of the things that was answered on that podcast, though, he, he had been asked, what made you decide to come back to eBay? And he said that I love the community. I love this. I love doing the whole eBay thing. Um, I think it's a lie. I think they offered him a lot of money to come back. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, he does. Now, I do want to say this, though. He seems like he is genuinely concerned with the community, with the way that he answers his questions. He doesn't sound like a robot. He doesn't sound like a corporate shill the same way that Devin had sounded uh, historically or even the way that like like a Scott Schenkel uh, kind of sounds in that sense where it's just very by the books. He actually has a little bit of character to what he's doing. Now, one of the first questions they asked, they said, what are you going to do to improve the relationship eBay has with its sellers? Uh, we're talking about consistent site issues, lack of accountability, and more in regards to communication. And one of the first things he said, he's like, hey, we're bringing back the unified seller operations and engagement team. Now, I have scoured the internet to try and get a better understanding of what that is. Can't find anything, okay? Which means to me that uh, this team, this dedicated team, which was even mentioned by name, is, is somehow going to be working in a capacity to communicate with us and get more information to us. But there is literally nothing available online to explain what he meant when he said that. And I think that that in its own regard or its own right really speaks to the fact that we desperately need better communication. Okay. You can't just say, oh yeah, we're going to assign this team to do that. Then not tell us what the team is going to do, how to get in touch with that team, how to work with the team. It's a little bit frustrating, you know? Um, and then they said that they want to have better communication by doing more stuff like this, by doing more AMAs, by doing more podcasts. And they also mentioned a few other things. They said eBay upfronts, uh, eBay meetups, and other seller summits throughout 2020 to try and increase visibility and communication. Now, these upfront and these meetup events, as nice as they are, they're really, really sh like really bad, okay? Because they'll have them in, let's say, LA and New York and nowhere else. And they will let people know that they're going to be happening and they'll let them know one week in advance. And you, you have to visit the website. You must register through the website. It's limited availability. So not everyone can go. It's literally a first come first serve scenario on that. And uh, it makes no sense. It, it doesn't really serve the masses the way that uh, something like this for instance, can serve the masses. And that's one of the other questions that I really want to pose to anyone from eBay who may be watching this. Why not use the tools that are already available and established and use those to spread the information to those who need it? Why not work with influencers and personalities and people who can, for instance, take you know, a piece of, uh, you know, a press release and spread it to a couple thousand people with a few clicks. 
why not utilize the tools that are already in place? And there's other personalities much, much larger than myself who are getting, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 views on their videos. These are the types of people that eBay should be working hand in hand with to get those questions in and even get them answered as well. Now, the next question up was a great one. They said, what can and will be done to improve the broken return system? For example, uh, you know, think about it right now. What brick and mortar location out there will accept half of an item on a return or an empty bag or, you know, a, a rock inside of the box instead of the actual item? Okay. And this was a great answer that was given. I'm going to read it out for you. It says, for as long as I, and this is, um, oh God, uh, Mr. Sweetnam uh, was referring uh, or speaking here. He said, for as long as I've worked at eBay, the brick, rock, different box inside of an item problem has been around. Unless we touch every transaction, we can never know what is really in the box. But I do think there is more we can do to look at both the buyer and seller history to get a sense of who we should believe. 10,000 happy buyers and one person claiming you sent them a brick seems pretty clear. Top buyer shopping from a new seller also seems clear. A top buyer shopping from a great seller and something goes wrong, guess what? That happens every day in retail. This is where we think eBay uh, have a better opportunity to balance the risk and cost in these situations with all of you. And I, I do like the idea of what he's saying when he says this. Like We get that there's Excuse me, guys, there's something in my eye. Ooh. I was working with my uh, my soundproofing earlier, and sometimes it just starts floating around a little bit. Terribly sorry. So I do appreciate what he's saying in the sense that it's like, yeah, we get that there's a problem. We get that we have abusive, uh, abusive buyers, and every now and then we have an abusive seller. But there's only so much we can do because we are so hands off. There's no way even for like a company like Mercari to have hands on with every single item that goes through. So there's talks now about adjusting the retail standard. And we're going to come full circle on those as well. Um, Highly Relevant says they need to do something about non-paying auction bidders, kick these people off the platform. And or create some type of way to say with the Mercari example. Uh, if I want to make an offer on something on Mercari, I am committing that amount of money at the moment I send the offer. There is no going back. If the buyer accepts that offer, they immediately receive the funds into their account and can immediately start processing the order. I don't think it would be a tall ask to ask eBay to implement something like that. Are you willing to bid up to $500 on this item? Okay, can we secure $500 uh, or a guarantee to pay $500, which we will automatically draft from this account the moment you win this auction. I can't, I don't see much issue with that. Um, and I thought they would start with that once everyone is using managed payments. Yeah, that'd be great. Hello to you as well, John. Thanks for popping in. I answered your question earlier in the show before you got here, just so you know. Um, and Yellowbrick is saying they can't do it with PayPal. It must be paid with a credit card. See, now the thing with... Uh, Mercari is they can draft it off a credit debit or your existing Mercari balance to be able to run that through. Craigslist Hunter did a charity auction. It was bid up to 13000 by a zero feedback feeder and they still haven't paid. Of course they're not going to pay. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the, the categories hit the hardest. I don't mean to sound condescending when I say that either. Well, the charity category, my God, is there a lot of trolls on that one. I've seen great items that I've actually wanted Okay, that I've bid on at charity and then seen them go tens of thousands of dollars up above and over what the item's actually worth by zero bidders and then the item's just never listed again. You know, the people say, you know what, screw this, I'm not going to list it on eBay. Now, there, there's another way that this could be circumvented and that's by having a buying cap. Okay, you want to spend more money than your account would allow you to spend. Okay, if you've historically had an account, let's say it's a 10 year old account. And the most expensive thing you've ever bought on there was $100. And now you want me to believe that you're going to bid $10,000. There should be some type of vetting process. If you want to bid that amount of money, guess what? You have to call in. You have to have your account authenticated. Maybe you have to show that you have the funds available within your PayPal. There's a lot of things that can be done. And coming up with creative solutions like we're talking about right now is going to be one way to actually get that done. Uh, actually, Macari did it with PayPal. Impressive. Um, and yeah, I think you should put up a non-refundable 10%, frankly, especially if you're going to be dealing with some of those higher ticket items.
Sorry, there was a uh, Apache copter that just went over. I thought there were... It's pretty darn loud. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on with that. That was the answer he gave. And, you know, I'm kind of okay with that. Now, some of the answers that we're going to be hearing here in a second, I'm not as okay with. This is a great question. Now, the, again, these were all questions submitted by the eBay community as well. Why are you sending emails promoting items we just sold for less? It's increasing cancels and potential returns. Now, his answer, again, I'm going to read it in full because it does not do justice to summarize these out. He said, cancellations after purchases happen. That isn't just an eBay problem. Amazon made it so easy for buyers as actually the expectation across all e-commerce sites now. Someone finds an item, purchases it, and then might check one or two other sites to make sure they did get the best price or even read one or more product review to make sure they got the right model. I offer this up first to say that even if we did everything perfectly, buyers will still cancel orders. It's going to happen. There's variables. This is me uh, ad-libbing here. There's variables that we just simply can't control. With that said, I went back and looked a number of my recent order confirmed emails, and it doesn't take long to find examples that none of us would say are correct. I just bought an item. Why would I be shown the exact same thing, whether cheaper or more expensive? What's the point in it? There's a lot we need to do here, but the candid answer is that a fundamental challenge is that not having a catalog makes this problem much harder. If we want to show your items to complement your purchase, and we are showing you other items that we think are similar from the same category, we actually can't tell the difference between similar items and identical items. We can fix it, but it is much harder without a catalog. And he's referring to the catalog that eBay had historically tried to implement, the same type of catalog system that Amazon has. Again, there's there's pros and cons to this methodology, but I would rather my buyers receive no marketing emails after than sending them one that could potentially dissuade them from making, making a future purchase, completing the purchase that they already made. Our emails are more effective now than they've ever been at driving incremental sales, okay? And that's supposedly a good thing for everyone, but I agree we still have further to go to make them more relevant for buyers and less frustrating for each of you. Now, here's the thing. When you talk about incremental sales, we're talking about sales on the platform as a whole, okay? I don't mind seeing a driven incremental sales increase for everyone involved, but I would prefer if that incremental increase was for Americans. Now, the reason I say that is because there's a disproportionate amount of items that come from overseas, okay? If you want to send marketing emails to my buyers showing them the exact same item they bought, for me, go ahead and do it, but only show them American sellers, okay? Because these emails disproportionately benefit China and Japan and Singapore and Taiwan, Malaysia, where all of these items are coming out from. I've seen these emails. I know what it looks like, okay? When, when, you, have to, when you have to compete again against your competitors from overseas. John Gabriel, $3 with the fist bump. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. I'll put it towards some good use. I'll, 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 I'll buy something nonsense with it, okay? I'll buy myself a, a swap meat churro next time I'm out. Let me take a look at this comment. Uh, I hate he did not answer the question, why all returns count against sellers concerning the metrics when they said people who offer quote-unquote free returns would not have these all count against you. Oh, okay. You're asking about a question that he skipped over. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, I've had many talks regarding metrics and it's very, very frustrating because traditionally being a top rated seller actually meant something. And what I found to be funny is that even on the eBay for business podcast, he said, does anyone really follow like the detailed seller ratings anymore? Does anyone really follow that? Well, here's the thing, you know, us sellers, we do when we get dinged with that extra 4% premium for being below standard and taking unnecessary returns while offering a good customer service experience and then paying for it months later with that 4% charge. Yeah, it's really, really frustrating. And that's certainly one of the questions, you know, again, if anyone from eBay sees this content that we're uh, casually producing here, uh, you know, we'd love an answer to something like that. But the free returns thing, I'm still at a point I went through and I turned off all returns again. Now, if you remember historically, we talked about in November, you know, I said, hey, it's a great time to move your business to one day shipping or one day handling, excuse me, bring it up to noon. If somebody buys something before noon, 
do that and you can convert and have higher sales. I had great sales. I also offered 30 day returns during the holiday because, well, I want to offer a great customer experience. If you want to buy something, you're not sure if somebody's going to like it. I don't want that to be the reason as to why you don't buy. Now that we're in January, I've turned all of that off. I'm back to one day handling the next business day. And then I have no returns on whatsoever. I'm just not going to do returns. So, uh, yeah. And then here's the next one. Okay. Somebody had asked about the 3% non-refundable transaction fee that we're getting assessed through PayPal right now, which is a very, very frustrating thing. I had a $100 canceled order the other day that cost me $3. Thank you for your $3, John Gabriel. You, you filled in the gap for me. Okay. And he said, well, PayPal is your own company. We don't necessarily want that here as in, in, in reference to that 3% non-refundable, but it's too early to tell. So what he is saying is that eBay may implement an identical policy, which frankly, they can get away with if they want to, because PayPal, let's be honest here in America, PayPal, Venmo, MoneyTree, it's all the industry standards, all owned by the same damn people. So if they say, oh, we're just going to do the industry standard, the 3% is non-refundable. And even later on, we're going to mention it too. He says that we believe that there shouldn't be a fee assessed if no one made any money. But that doesn't really ring true when we talk about cost per click advertising. So if they're willing to do cost per click advertising, take money out of our pockets, even though nobody made any money and there was no transaction whatsoever, then what's to keep them? What's to keep him from doing the exact same thing when it comes to the PayPal transactions? John Gabriel, do you get dinged on one day handle if it's bought and packaged before Monday? So the way to look at uh, your handling is that Saturday and Sunday don't count. So if you have one business day and somebody buys something Friday morning, you can get it out by Monday and you're going to be fine. Okay. So uh, obviously check your account, you know, make sure that you have everything the way that it's meant to be that works best for you. Uh, Now here's an interesting one. Now on the topic of should we remove the 7, 10, 14, 30 day listing here? Let me get this out the way. Should we be removing or uh, uh, reinstating the ability to do seven day, 10 day, 14 day and 30 day listings? Because believe it or not, there's still a lot of people out there who are furious that they can't do a 30 day listing. And it does not seem to matter how many times I explain the benefits to doing it good till canceled or how many times I explain the drawbacks to doing a 7, 10, 14, 30 day listing, there's still people, and there's even people who do YouTube, okay, who go out there and uh, proliferate this narrative that it's somehow better for you, even though it's statistically proven that it's not. Mr. Sweetnam's answer, we have no plans to reverse the decision here. I've heard a lot of things since I've returned that don't make sense Uh, and will drive to change. But to be clear, I haven't seen an example where the move to good till canceled is the wrong one. Good till canceled listings have better sell through the permanent item ID, uh, how those uh, changes, how those items appear in search engine optimization, which helps everyone and consistent item IDs help search deliver better ranking. I'm not sympathetic with the strategy of starting, stopping short duration repeatedly to appear at the top of the time of newly listed, this is bad for buyers and overall search relevant, which actually hurts all sellers, even if the person doing it wins. If you'd like to share other use cases, I'm certainly willing to listen and discuss. So the idea that by ending and then relisting, you're going to refresh your listings and listen here, guys, that does not exist. Okay. Stop messaging me and asking about refreshing. I did a, a, a eBay seller miss video Okay. The only benefit you actually get said here by a senior VP is that when somebody searches newly listed, it moves that item to the top. But as he said, even if that person does win and they do sell their item at what cost you're negatively impacting the buyer experience for everyone who doesn't want to see your item again, they've seen your item. Okay. If there's collectors out there going through the market, they got to see it again. It's not sorted the way they want to. And, uh, It's just, it makes the overall site not indexed in a way that's most beneficial for the consumers. eBay wants to put the items in the order of most likely to sell because they get paid and you get paid. Now, if you keep trying to manipulate the system and jam your items further up, 
okay? Good items are going to naturally sell one way or the other. But if you want to manipulate and try and game the system, you're hurting every other seller on the platform just so that you can get some mediocre gain, okay? Um, let me take a look at this comment. <laughs> it's spamming, yep. Uh, Richard says, it's more the fees associated with the relist part since they still run them at monthly intervals. Yep, and uh, I, I get that some people are upset that they're that there's a different fee structure or that they're just rerunning their listings and they're taking their fees regardless. Okay. You get a hundred free listings per account, make 10 accounts. If you want to have a thousand items and you don't want to pay for your listings, I don't care. There's options out there for you. Uh, and then Mr. Cruz, it says it takes 30 days to get indexed onto Google search. So I think it's better. Now, the thing is with indexing, you can get indexed into Google search within 48 hours, depending on your listing, the relevance of the listing, the amount of click through it has, wherever the bots are at the time that they're going through. But yes, it can take up to 30 days to get indexed onto Google. And eBay has even said that within their TOS as far as visibility on the site. When you buy 30 days, you're not guaranteed 30 days. You're not even getting indexed into eBay itself, let alone Google, until it, it takes the time to get there. Uh, now, the next question that came up, it said, will you con reconsider managed payments? And he said, to tackle the immediate question, no. There are no plans to reverse course of managed payments. I want to bring as much stability and predictability to your business as possible, and the current setup with PayPal doesn't lend itself towards that. Now, it's important to remember, last year eBay Open 2019, this was the start day, the last day of eBay Open before uh, to start our countdown. It said 365 days from then, 100% of sellers will be on managed payments. If you're not on managed payments yet, we got less than, what, six months? Six and a half months till, till D-Day, till we, we're rocking and rolling, we're all on managed payments. So this is all relevant to all of us. He said, look at what happened with the USPS and the UPU, uh, United Postal Union, in September, October. We were precariously close to all U.S. sellers losing the ability to export anywhere in the world. That's crazy. I'm not a fan of PayPal keeping the fees on a buyer return cancellation, but same problem. When eBay is fully dependent on one solution, we can't bring the best solution or cost to your business. Moving to managed payments still allows buyers to use PayPal as well as, uh, but as we progress, it will also allow Google Pay, Apple Pay, and solutions like EFT plus wire transfer. EFT stands for electronic funds transfer. It refers to things like uh, using ATMs, phone payments, bank-to-bank -bank payments. Uh, the benefit with EFT and why it's good for eBay is that certain people will not sell very expensive things on eBay because they do not want to pay 5 or 10% of a $100,000 or $1 million transaction because it costs so much to do it. And it scares sellers away because when we're talking about a hundred thousand dollar item, yeah, if, if I'm going to have to pay $10,000 to sell that, uh, yeah, I'll find another way. Don't worry. I I'm good. eBay. I'll find somebody else who can do it for less. And with electronic funds transfer EFTs, it allows you to do a one-time uh, cost or uh, you're paying a lower cost percentage wise. Uh, but most times you can do like one transaction for 40 bucks or 60 bucks. And that could be your total transactional fee cost as far as the payment and the money moving hands. So I kind of understand that. Um, now he said that all of these additional payments will bring more shoppers to our platform. And in the case of EFT plus wire transfer allows sellers who can't make money with today's PayPal fees to be successful on our platform on really high priced items. We've already processed over 1 billion in payments and have no plans to slow down. Having said that, all that, there's actually news to me recently about the difference in the per item versus per transaction fee. If you are selling 40 different postcards to one customer in the same transaction, I agree it would seem odd for us to charge the per item on each one. I don't have a full history here, but we'll dig into it. A lot will change and become clear as we get further into next year, so please keep providing the feedback. So he's referring to that 25 cent per item, basically a line fee, if you sell on eBay with managed payments. So if I have a stack of 10 CDs and one person decides to buy all 10 of my CDs, it's going to be $2.50 worth of fees, wherein with PayPal, it's a single, you know, what, 30 cent transaction fee. So with managed payments, it actually becomes more expensive in that scenario. Now, this was originally implemented 
under the uh, the oversight of Devin Wenig. And now that we have some fresh blood coming to the table, somebody who's communicating a little bit more, we may actually see a situation where we might see a reversal or even a fee cap would be fine with me. Cap it at maybe, let's say a dollar. Sure, you're going to lose on some, but you're going to gain wildly on others, I guess. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, I've said this before, eBay is going to scrape for every single penny they can. And they're going to try and get millions of these pennies out of people because we're kind of got our hands tied. We kind of have to pay it. And when talking about this transition to go from PayPal across to managed payments, he gave a really, really good analogy. And he said it's, you know, somebody had mentioned that it's like trying to change out the engine on a plane while it's flying through the sky. And he said, no, 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 it's much, much harder than that. He said, we are expected to fully disassemble the plane and fully reassemble it with new parts while it's flying. And that's basically to give reference to the logistical difficulty that eBay is facing moving from PayPal to manage payments. And I never really thought about it from that perspective before, that any other e-commerce site that would have to do a massive overhaul like this would simply shut the site down for a week or two weeks, or even a month, if they have to shut everything down, bring it up with the new managed payments, test, debug, do everything that needs to happen. But too many people depend on eBay to even shut it down for three or four days, let alone the amount of time that it might actually take. And that's why this process is taking so long. That's why there's uh, so much time going into getting everyone moved over to managed payments. Now, the next one that came up, He said, eBay in 2020 is broken. What do you plan to do to fix it? Forced returns, promoted listings, service metrics, et cetera. Okay, many are leaving to greener pastures, i.e. Marketplace, Mercari, Poshmark, Etsy, et cetera. People are leaving, okay? And he said, hopefully this one is covered in all of the other questions, but ultimately it ties back to the question on, quote unquote, how much are we going to improve the relationship with our sellers? More connection plus understanding, a clear articulate, for the value, uh, clear articulate of value for fees and a focus on where eBay has a right to win on our terms versus trying to be someone else. So understanding that eBay is losing a bit of its identity currently, you know, this, this notion that they're trying to be like Amazon, which we've talked about forever. And then one of the key things, that little phrase that he said right there, a value on fees. Those of you who are just tuning in right now, we're talking about uh, we're talking about the new senior VP for the America's Market, Jordan Sweetnam, and the questions that were answered on the community board. Uh, now, value for fees. Are we getting value for what we're spending our money on currently? Okay, when it comes to things like promoted listings, it's a lot easier to see somewhat of a one-to-one on the back end, but when there's a fee increase on a category that we're working in, do we actually get a benefit from that? When we're moving over to managed payments, are we actually getting a benefit on our fees? Now, this next question, I found this one to be quite an interesting one, and this is, again, another wordy one. It said, on the topic of promoted listings, it went from two slots now to five slots, and those who have paid to mature listings for rank, even as a loss leader, are hurting the most. So, Some of you out there just don't know this because you're not scaling in that way, but every now and then you'll get an item in and you'll say, okay, I am willing to lose money on this item right now. Okay. I will sell, uh, you know, maybe 20 units, uh, and lose $2 on each unit. But what end, what will end up happening is I'll, I'll sell a bunch of them real quick. I'll get some reviews in on the item. The item will rank up really high in search because people know that they uh, can come here and get that item. I can show the completed sales. eBay will promote my item naturally because it's an item that actually sells and they'll lose money on them. Okay. And then maybe move them to break even. And then from there, they'll move them up to profit to where they're actually supposed to be. But they've gotten that organic uh, or forced organic uh, value. What does this do when people start paying for promoted listings? And she's saying originally there was two at the top. Now there's five at the top slots. One through five are being filled. So it takes away the value of those lost leaders or the value of those who matured their listings going on. It said, my biggest concern with promoted listings is the lack of quality control. Why is eBay allowing subpar quality sellers who do not promote a great experience? um, Why are they being allowed to use these promoted listings? I challenge you to search for 10 search terms that come to mind and check each promoted listing seller. I guarantee you, you will find sellers who either do not ship within zero to one days, 
have a non-competitive price, have below 97% positive feedback, do not ship with tracking or ship with slow shipping, are not top rated or ship from locations in China. As this time taken from eBay's website, these are the following requirements for promoted listings. Promoted listings is available to all eBay sellers who, with top rated or above standard status. Sellers can promote fixed price listings for most categories, yada, 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 uh, has applied our recommended price guidance, includes at least two pictures, does not have item condition listed as parts not working, does not have shipping listed as local pickup, auction and auction buy it now listings are not eligible at this time. And then finished off with, sure seems like easy requirements, right? Have 94% feedback, ship four days later, offer no tracking, have a price double the price of the first organic search. You're a perfect fit for promoted listings. Now, I read this rant, which is pretty much what it is. And I said, yeah, that's pretty much it. Because everything that eBay has been saying for the last couple of years is about increasing the overall quality of the buyer experience. That's why we're putting up with this, right? That's why we're being told how to run our business, how we need to have our returns, what color background our photos need to be, how our titles need to be structured, the type of pricing that we need to do, the shipping options and the handling time that we must provide. Why are we going through all of these hoops if you're just going to allow somebody who has a really shitty listing to put their item all the way at the top? Okay, and, and why are we working so hard to ensure that the buyer experience is great when those who are getting the preferential treatment by paying for it do not care about the buyer experience? The only concern for them is making money. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, I like money just as much as the next person, but I want to earn my money through a quality experience and not through a subpar one just because I spent a little money to get it. What's going on, A&M Hunter? Thank you for the props on the shirt. Hope you're doing well this evening. So the response from Mr. Sweetnam, he said, wrapping up for today, so I'll keep this one short, but I agree with the concerns raised. A little bit dickish there. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, okay? And I've actually been working on a little skit that I'm going to be doing regarding this, but I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how many things you have to do with your day, okay? These questions represent the concern of hundreds of thousands of sellers on the platform, okay? Give us an extra 10 minutes of your time and don't waste your time saying that you're spending your time answering these questions. It's something I saw pretty quickly after my return. Great sellers with top rated, amazing feedback, great prices were ranking below sellers with zero feedback or even worse feedback scores of 94 and 96%. I think promoted listings is a great tool for sellers who used it correctly. Have a new product and you want to have it rank up into search quickly? Use promoted listings. But if you're new to the platform and haven't proven that you can deliver the buyer experience of our best sellers, it doesn't make any sense to have those items appear at the top of search. I certainly do not want someone talking or someone taking money out of shipping faster or packing better to invest into paying for a promoted listing placement instead. Now, that is a very, very strong statement. Okay. He said, I don't want people taking away from the customer experience in exchange just to get the customer. Okay. And I, I got the feeling that that might come to bite him in the butt someday when uh, people are going to be pushing back against some of the policies that are already in place. It says, conversations on this topic are underway. I can't commit to a specific date or change, but don't be surprised to see us testing some new things in the new year, announce, announcing changes by Q2. Okay, Q2 starts in two and a half months. So by Q2, which mean by the end of Q1, I would love to see a change to the way that promoted listings are being implemented currently. Now, we've said it before, Okay, we've learned about this since the shareholder call that happened at the beginning of 2019. Devin wanted promoted listings to generate $1 billion in additional revenue for eBay year over year. Okay, they're not going to be giving up on this baby. They made way too much money. $700 million so far in promoted listings. And just to be clear, okay, that is $700 million we have gifted to eBay in exchange to be able to sell our items on their platform. We said, hey, uh, you know, we're already paying you, but uh, here's 700 million more dollars. Thanks. Okay. And that's that. I think that's the rub for a lot of people is, you know, you kind of have to play ball in this sense if you want to stay competitive within the market. Okay. And again, you know, we talk about it. Is this delivering value on the fees? Okay. 
But uh, yeah, and then the last question said, do you actually read the messages on the board? And he said, great question. I'm not reading the boards every week. I do read posts most weeks, but I try to spread my time across reading the boards, catching up on various eBay groups on Facebook, answering direct customer emails, or tracking various seller calls. No one, no one week is the same, but no week goes without me touching one of multiples of these channels. Cool. I don't think it's too much to ask to read the uh, community boards each week. I read the community boards each week. Takes about an hour, okay? Find an hour. So it's literally the pulse of the community. And while we're on it, I'll tell you, if you're listening, do some cleanup, okay? Some of the admins in there, they're absolutely horrible people who like to ban people who ask good questions. I've had accounts banned. I've had friends' accounts get banned. You know, you're not always going to like to hear, hear the question that's being asked, but sometimes it needs to be asked, okay? Hard questions, hard answers, okay? And as Pam said, hit the damn like button. We need your support. Hell, I even do that thing that you guys like. Look at that. Fancy. Yeah, those things don't come cheap. And also, guys, if you haven't done so yet, do me a favor. Subscribe to our channel. It's completely free, okay? And, uh, you know, I looked in some analytics, okay? Check this out. 35% of you who watch my show have not subscribed yet. Okay. And, and of that, of the people who do watch 55% of you are women. Hello. Um, so subscribe to the channel. It does help out. And of the people who have subscribed only 30% of you who have actually, actually not even 30, 14% of you have clicked the bell. That little bell next to the subscribe button notifies you anytime I go live. And sometimes I randomly go live. So if you want to catch that, okay, you have to click the little bell to be able to see that. Guys, we're going to continue on with our show for today. Today, we're going to be talking about understanding modern online scams. Why, why are you still being scammed online? Why are people asking me questions? Okay. Somebody just said that all I have to do is uh, I have to cash the money order and then send them the phone plus $200 of the $500 money order. Do you think it's a scam? Yes. Yes, it is. Why are you doing this? Money from Mars. Okay, okay. Click the bell. Jay is so bossy. Hey, okay. You know, I'll tell you the same thing I told my ex-girlfriend. I've got a pretty good bead on, uh, you know, what I'm doing here. I'd like to think I know what's best. Okay, just give me the benefit of the doubt this one time. Give me your trust. It's a salesman thing I used to say. Give me your trust one time, and I promise you, I'll never need to ask for it again. There we go. Do you believe it? Do you believe me? Lee James says, as an admin, you should only ban people for being abusive, trolling, rival groups, sending people to be spies, and promoting other groups or sites. Yes. Yes, believe it or not. We, we actually had to flush out some spies from our group. We had some spies that were in there uh, attempting to gather information for uh, a unknown, uh, we'll call him the, uh, the instructor. Okay. We had to flush out some spies for him, which it's just unfortunate. It's weird and unfortunate that those things happen. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about some scams guys. I was the target of a scam this week. Okay. Why? Because I posted items onto Craigslist. Okay. And now those of you who do not know, Craigslist has become a cesspool for uh, thieves and con men, generally from, I hate to say this, generally from Africa. Okay, we're talking Jordan, Uganda, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a, a hotbed of criminal enterprise scams going on all over the area. Okay, and we see a lot of it coming from South America, too. And there's, there's a few things that everyone needs to understand when it comes to doing business online. Now, we've talked before about how to protect yourself in person, okay? The obvious stuff, meet in safe locations, well-lit. A lot of police stations have uh, secure exchange spots. But when we talk about doing e-commerce online, there's a lot of scams and a lot of tricks that are happening. The one that somebody attempted to get me with, which is a very, very easy one to fall for, and I'll tell you, if it was done correctly, if it was executed correctly, I could pull it off with you. I guarantee you I could trick you into giving up your phone number, okay? And I'm not just talking the digits of your phone number. I'm talking about the access to your phone number, my ability to access your voicemail, to set up a Google Voice account under your phone number, to be able to use your phone number to make phone calls on your service, 
to be able to access your iCloud or your backend, your messages. I can load up your, uh, your inbox on my computer. I can do all of those things with this very simple thing. So when I post on the Craigslist, there's bots that go through and they scrub the new ads that go up for phone numbers. So the moment I run an ad, I usually get hit by three to four of these scam attempts each time I run an ad. And I need to run these ads, okay? Because I'm selling local goods here. And this is the phone theft scam ad or attempt that's happening. And what they do is they say, hey, I wanna buy your item, but I just need to verify that you're a human real quick. Okay, I'm going to send you a code. Okay, once you get that code, go ahead and send it back to me so that way I know you are a human. Okay, and you're probably wondering what are they doing? Well, what they have done is that they have taken your phone number and they have run it through Google Voice and they said, I have forgotten my password. Okay, with that phone number. And what Google Voice does is they send a code to your cell phone to get you to be able to gain access back to your account again, okay? And they'll say, go ahead and provide me with the code, okay? If you are a dummy, which a lot of people are, and this is a stupid one you have to work yourself out of, if you provide them with your code, you will lose access to your phone, okay? They can literally lock you out of your phone by locking you out of your Google account. Okay, because they'll be able to gain access to it. The biggest reason why they do this is because they want more phone numbers. Okay, The more phone numbers that they have, the more attacks that they can make, the more identities they can steal. The whole purpose of taking my phone number is to be able to get more people's identities and to be able to go after and target more people every day. Okay, I see this happen all the time. If this does happen to you, you have to attempt to regain access to your Google account. You may even need to contact your, uh, your phone provider, and you may even need to get a whole new phone number and have that one canceled. It is a very expensive and costly mistake. Sometimes they do it very benign. They may access and create a brand new Google voicemail in the background and just use it benignly in the background. But either way, it's a massive inconvenience for you. So watch out for this new scam. On top of that, I must stress this. Do not work with checks unless you know the person. And if the person says, I do everything in checks, it's how I operate. Excuse me, guys. It's how I operate. I just like doing everything by check. You say, okay, great. If you want to use a check, let's go to your bank. What? If you want to write me a check, we will go to your bank together and they will clear the check right there for you. You can hand them that check straight to the bank, and then you can hand me cash right back. But never take checks from people you don't know. And I also want to ex uh, explain something too. Anytime someone is going to mail you a money order, a postal money order, a Western Union money order, etc., the fake ones are incredibly good, okay? Incredibly good to the point where most postal workers cannot detect a counterfeit postal money order. And if you, it's an amount under $1,000, they do not call verify it. So if you get one of these postal money orders and you go cash in, you're like, yes, I got my cash. Everything is fine. Odds are it's not fine. And it's going to catch up to you here shortly. Because what ends up happening is when this gets charged back, the post office will co uh, contact you. And yes, postal ones are cashed right there at the counter. I cashed a couple grand worth last week. They cash them right there at the counter. If they realize later that they're fake, guess what? The cops will come after you and they will expect you to repay it. And you can get charged for issuing counterfeit documents to a government agency. It's a big charge. It's a fraud charge. Okay. Now, obviously you can explain your situation to them, but do not do that. Furthermore, don't ever pay anyone with gift cards. This is another scam that's going on right now. People were calling in, they'll say, you know, hey, your pg and &E is overdue. We're going to shut you off. We need $300 from you today, or we're going to we're gonna have to shut off your pg and &E. okay? Now, obviously, a lot of these people don't have great English accents, but people are falling for this every day. And if they weren't, they would stop doing it. They would say the scam isn't working, but because people are still trying, they continue to do it. And the newest one, and Richard, you've seen this yourself, they'll say, we need you to pay in gift cards, okay? And they'll tell them, yeah, we want $500 worth of you know, Macy's gift cards, $500 worth of GameStop gift cards. Uh, and yeah, Richard's saying, I stop gift card scams at least once a week. Okay. It's even to the point where Walmart has signs up on the inside that says, if you do not know why you are buying gift cards, do not buy them from us because it's starting to become a thing where people will go in and buy $400 worth of gift cards at one time and they'll do them in $100 increments across the board. So 
That's the thing, guys. Never pay with gift cards. No one is ever going to ask you to pay with gift cards. And, you know, it almost pains me that I'm even having to have this talk right now. But some of you have never heard of these. And you may have a family member come to you and you're saving them from having to deal with the headache that's going to be this. And, yeah, they're thinking that they need to use it to pay a utility bill. And, honestly, it's our low IQ, uh, you know, population as well as our senior population. And I'm not saying that the two are one and the same. I'm saying the young people who are stupid make these mistakes and the older people who simply have not experienced certain levels of technology and, you know, attempting to adapt to the times will not know that these things are not how they are supposed to be done. Uh, Mr. Exquisite says, I carry a pen detector for cash too. It sounds like fear mongering, but I do it for anything over 20. And if it's local sale, I'll tell you, I used to do that. But you know what I do now? I scuff or I scratch my nail against the ridge underneath of the face. Okay, so the face of the bill and I scuff it back and forth. You can hear it and you can feel it. It's a very discreet thing you can do in front of a customer even. So when people hand me their money, I just rub it as I'm passing the bill from one to the next. I rub my nail against it from one bill to the next and I can detect the bills right there on the spot. So you may want to check that out. You may want to try that. It works really great for me. Um, And then... Uh, another thing I must emphasize, don't ship items unless you have the money in hand. Okay. Uh, got to have that cash in hand. Um, so, and then there's a couple other little scams going on right now. Another big one right now is the car wrap scam. I don't know if you've seen this, you know, make $200 extra per week by putting this wrap on your car. Uh, a lot of those are really fake as well. Okay. And they'll say like, Hey, they're, they're, they're basically, they're repackaging the same type of scam. They say, Hey, we're going to send you all your supplies. We need to know that you're going to work with us. And they'll actually send you stuff that you need to stick to your car. And you know, they're, they're, they're companies that don't exist. Sometimes they do, but most times they don't. They'll have you stick them to their car and they'll say, okay, Hey, we're going to send you a money order. Now we need to know that you can do this work for us, cash this and get it sent out. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Zyda says, everyone seems to have Venmo these days. I don't have Venmo. I'm not going to get a Venmo. I'm sorry. I've got money in too many accounts right now as it is. I got, I got money being held in Amazon, held in Mercari, PayPal, my PayPal business, my PayPal prepaid. I am not, I am not going to get another account. And PayPal owns Venmo. You know, if they really want, they just merge the two together. It wouldn't even be that difficult. But I'm not getting another account. But kudos to everyone who does have one. Uh, on top of that, uh, the family ransom scam. I don't know if you've heard this one. This is another one, popular one going on. Somebody calls you 10 o'clock at night, you know, Hey, we've got your sister. She's being held captive right now. You need to give us $2,000 or we're not going to release her. And what they've done, they've gotten really sophisticated with this one to where they're going through people's social media pages. Now, if you haven't secured your social media, it's very important that you do that. Go take a look at what your social media page looks like when you're visiting it as, as a stranger. And if you say you're going on vacation, if I put up a post, you'll, you will never, ever see me put up a post notifying people when I'm going on vacation. One, it's dangerous for your own household to let people know when you're going to be gone. And two, it puts everyone else around me at risk as well. Okay. Because if somebody calls them and says that I am not okay and I am not safe and no, do not attempt to call his phone, we have him in, you know, captive, yada, yada, yada. It creates a very, very scary situation for somebody who does not know any better. And they say, you have to wire us this money right now or we're going to hurt them. We're not going to release them. And by putting all of that information out on your social media, when you're going to be leaving, where you're at, if you're telling them, yeah, I'm, I'm going to Cancun, okay? People traveling to, to you know Mexico or South America, they're targeted the most. It does not take much to find profiles that talk about stuff like this. So more often than not, we're seeing stuff like that happening too. So be mindful of that. And here's another one that I've seen all over Facebook over the last month. It says BS secret Santa or this Amazon sister. I don't know if you've seen this one, this, this regifting scam. Okay. Oh, you just pick any gift on Amazon. You're going to, you're going to send gifts out to five people or 10 people or one person. And in exchange, you're going to get up to a hundred gifts from other people who are doing the same thing. It's a modified chain mail scam. It does not exist. You are going to buy something for a stranger and you will get nothing in return. The only person who benefits is the original creator of the post and maybe one or two levels, but most people aren't going to do anything. They'll add themselves to the list and they hope that they get something shipped to them. We've seen this happening literally since the days of snail mail. Okay. When chain letters were getting passed around that way, 
I remember when my father folded up a $10 bill and shoved it inside of an envelope and mailed it to a stranger. And I'm just like, you're an absolute moron. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Pam says she saw the Santa one. Yeah. It's, it's going all around the internet. It doesn't, it does not matter how many people you tell. And they, and I even saw, I saw a comment. Oh, it pained me so badly. She said, I don't really care if I do get tricked. I'm happy that I'm, you know, I'm sending something to, to someone who, who would want it. It's like, if you don't care about your money, here's my PayPal address. Send me as much money that you don't care about as you'd like. I will take all of it. Okay. This, uh, this non-argument argument, you know, well, I'm doing a good thing for society. It's no, you're spreading lies and misinformation. You're giving people false hope and, uh, you're creating a, a systemic problem of, of scamming here online. Another one to talk about too, immigration scams are going on right now. There's a lot of bad information being spread around regarding immigration. If you're somebody in that situation, if you don't understand the phone call that's coming into you, make calls to people that you can call, okay? Make sure that you understand. I also want to clarify too, I may be doing some work with the census moving forward. I've been uh, potentially offered a, a very good job that I can do here from the house and I can do 40 hours worth of work in about 15. It's going to pay me about $1,500 a week, maybe 1000 to 1500 a week working from home. So I may just add that on. I'd like to get a new car over the next three months, so I may just add that on. But there's a lot of confusion regarding uh immigration and status and stuff on the census. So if you are participating in the census and remember guys, if you're here in California, just tell us zero when we ask you how many people live here. Uh, but if you are participating in the census in that capacity, just remember, okay, census employees cannot give out any information regarding immigration status, even if we know it, okay, we can get jail time. There's massive fines associated with it as well. So don't worry about that. But if you get a call in and you're not sure about the context of it, Call the correct people. Call the police if you're not sure. And it's important to know, too, that there's a thing called spoofing, okay? I have an app on my phone. Don't ask me why. Powerful tool to have. I can call any number I want with any number I want. I can call you from your local police department's main number, and it will show up on your phone. And I can say this is Officer Kraft with the Chicago Police Department, okay? Uh, you know, we, we need to speak with you about something important. And the number will show up as the correct number. So if things don't seem correct, take a breath, step back, evaluate what's actually happening, okay? Consult with somebody in the know. There's tons of resources available online right now. If you don't know, ask somebody, okay? Let me see what this question here. John says, my sister got scammed with a similar secret Santa. People stole an old lady's personal check and her bank cashed it the same day. That was not cool. Yep, it happens. Vince dubbed, thank you for commenting. I think this is the first time I've ever seen you comment. Welcome to the show. Says, I just got an order from somebody today where the zip code was odd to eBay and the zip code they suggested was way different from what the buyer's zip actually was. Yep, that can happen. Be mindful of that. Um, John Gabriel says, she even asked her bank if people done these things. Teller said yes all the time. Yeah. Scams are very prevalent. And, th and that's why I'm dedicating part of today's show to talk about it. Some people are listening to this and I've, I can watch the numbers as people leave. And some people think this is absolutely stupid stuff to be reminded of. Okay. But I get assaulted with scams almost on a daily basis. Okay. Anyone who is calling my phone to try and sell me something is a scammer. I'm on the do not call list. If you've ever put your number on a Google listing, ever, at any point, you've ever owned a business, you know what it's like. You get calls every day. Your Google listings may not be active and appear. You know, a Google ads representative wishes to speak with you. It's all Indian scammers. It's all people trying to sell me SEO, telling me that they can fix my listing for $99. That's not why it's appearing now. Every day I get these calls. Okay. We're going to talk about a few last things on this and then we're going to move on because I don't want to be on this all night. We might not even have time for our final story of the day so that way I can show off some items. But uh, uh, renting and housing scams, deposit scams, okay? Uh, don't ever leave money on a place, uh, you know, after you've seen it unless you've got paperwork and you can validate that the person actually lives there. Okay. That's an important one to know. Consult with somebody. Okay. Have a healthy amount of skepticism. It's all right to be skeptical. Don't believe that you should always take things at face value just because you want to trust society. Be skeptical. If it's too good to be true, it probably is, okay? It's important to remember too, 
No one gives away free money, okay? If they do, I haven't met this person yet. Actually, I'll tell you what. If you would like to give away free money, we have a little button down there. It's gray. It looks like a dollar sign. Go ahead and press that, okay? Then you enter in the amount of money that you would like to give me, and then it will appear right where that three is up in the corner, okay? We will take all of the free money that you would like to give us right now. Richard says, I do several times a day. Yep, get those too. Ashley Sims, I don't know. I think you've commented before, but if not, welcome to the show. Thank you for your comment. Has anyone had issues with items being sold on eBay but not getting an email notification from eBay? 100%. Yes, I have had that issue. Uh, and on top of that, I've recently been getting issues where I will be notified by uh, by PayPal first that the money has arrived, and it can be hours later before I get notified by eBay that the sale has actually occurred. And sometimes I'll log into eBay on a computer and the sale is not recorded. And sometimes even the item is still active. Even though I've been paid and the item has zero quantity, it will still show active until the eBay servers actually catch up. It's a little bit frustrating. Just remember if you have any negative impact on your account because of it, eBay will protect you from that, okay? Mm, yep. 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 You, you get it now. <laughs> um, like I said, no one gives away free money. Always use secure meeting spots. Be mindful about giving out personal information. Okay. Anything beyond your first name and your cell phone number should be considered personal information. Be mindful about giving out your address, the type of vehicle you drive, your vehicle's license plate number, all of these things can be used to build a profile for people who want to scam you, okay? And lastly, again, I must iterate, when in doubt, call the police. The police are there for a reason. If you call them up and say, hey, I'm worried I might be being scammed right now. I need to talk to somebody about it, okay? There's going to be somebody there that you can talk to. There's going to be a specialist if they need to that can give you a call back. And same here, Vince. I've had that issue a few times. Everything's always worked out fine. I've even had ones, like you were saying, delayed up over a day before. So, guys, did you hear about... Oh, my gosh. I love how my notes moved. You guys hear about the big sales uh, in 2019? eBay went ahead and made a post, and they talked about the biggest sales of 2019. And I was shocked by some of them. The biggest one was a power lunch with... The man himself over there, Warren Buffett, to benefit Glide, uh, which I can't remember what the Glide organization does. Eh, sorry. Uh, anyone want to take a guess what one power lunch with Warren Buffett? If you know the answer, don't say it, okay? But if you want to take a guess at what you think that went for at auction on eBay, I'd love to see your guesses. I'll tell you number two. The number two item was that Tom Brady card right there. 2000 autograph playoff contenders championship ticket trading card. Sold for four hundred thousand. Richard guessed two hundred fifty-one k. So I hate to I hate to burst your bubble immediately, but the number two item sold for four hundred thousand. So we're over four hundred k already. Okay, number three was a Michael Jordan Universe card. Number four was a Lamborghini Aventador that sold for three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, we have a bunch of cars, uh, but we also have that motorhome. Pretty cool looking motorhome sold for two hundred eighty thousand. Um, a Ford GT sold for 220,000, uh, Porsche 911. You guys, you guys have listed all your Porsche 911s, right? Got to make sure you get those online. Apparently those are going for $199,000 if you got a 2019 one. Uh, but this one lunch, I'm going to go and say the answer right now. This one lunch with Warren Buffett, $4.3 million for a power lunch with Warren Buffett. Now, I didn't get all the details of it, but holy cow, is that some record-breaking numbers? I think that might have even been the record going on the previous year. And down towards the end of the list, Magic the Gathering Black Lotus, probably a uh, PSA 8, 8.5 or higher, $166,000. might have even been packed fresh, ungraded. We also have a, a Patek, uh, Patek, Patek, Patek Philippe Grand Complications Calendar Manual Men's Gold Watch, and another gold watch uh, between 100,000 and 140,000. So pretty interesting list. 
of things. If you want to see it, you can visit the eBay uh, media page where they went ahead and posted it there. Cool list though. And I'll tell you the most exciting thing about this entire story is that graphic that I made. It looks way better than the graphic that they have on their page. If you haven't heard, we actually announced what stories we're going to be talking about on our Instagram. Okay. You can see them there first. Uh, before we even air them. So if you have some questions regarding the stories, you can get your questions ready. But definitely check out our Instagram. You get some behind-the-scenes access, learn about things a little bit sooner. You can contact me directly through there, too, if you'd like to talk with me. That's available on Instagram, at Reseller Roundup, all one word. Pam will put a link in the thing, but if you've got your mobile device... Reseller Roundup. That's how you can get in touch with us. And we're going to be doing some big things at eBay Open this year where you will need to have your Instagram. We're going to be having some exclusive content on there for eBay Open this year. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and move over to our last story and frankly might be one of the most important ones of the evening. We're going to be talking about the USPS and their potential plans to go private coming into January. Now, firstly, we got to start off by saying those of you who do not know, USPS likes to just take that money, ball it up, and just just chuck it away, okay? And now, USPS does not have a whole lot of power in what they can and can't do because they're essentially ran like a government organization. They're run, run and owned by the government, and their strings are getting pulled pretty hard. As of right now, in 2019 alone, USPS lost nearly $8 billion last year. And you, you're sitting back and thinking, how? There's so many packages being shipped, so much first-class mail. So much is going on with USPS, but they're just bleeding money like mad. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that their retirement and their severance pay has to be front-loaded. Okay, They're having to pay this in advance for their government employees, essentially. They're, they're putting the money out there, so they're running at this massive deficit right now. Not to mention that the government is essentially, uh, you know feeding them money to keep them afloat right now. To understand how bad the situation is as a whole, and I want you to know, before we get too far into this, I am pro-privatization. And if you're not, and you're curious why I am, you will understand why when I am done. But USPS as a whole is in the whole $143 billion. And that's total debt on books, nonwithstanding, as well as any liabilities that they have. That is a disgusting amount. So you have context that's more than the total uh, GDP of Syria, Madagascar, Jamaica, and I uh, Iceland combined. Okay? That's a lot. Okay, And as far as how far out, I'm not sure, but I would say probably enough to cover their youngest retirees. So uh, probably people, probably 50 years out, I would think people retiring at 45 to cover them to 95. That's just an educated guess here. Okay, But uh, the other thing that people need to understand is that the way that USPS is set up currently, it's set up like a monopoly. Okay, And I mean that. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what about FedEx and UPS and uh, DHL? What about those companies? They compete with U USPS. Actually, they don't compete with USPS because USPS is the only company that's allowed to have slow mail delivery. Okay, Think about this. Really think about this. They're the only ones allowed to have slow delivery. The other companies are considered urgent companies, rush companies. Okay. Because that's the way it's set up. That's why you don't see them doing letter mail. You don't see them doing first class mail. It's because they're simply not allowed to here in America. Most of the branches that are open here in America right now lose money. Almost every single one does. There's very few branches that actually make money. Let me look at these comments here. I heard a rumor that USPS privatizing that they will quit shipping packages. Any news on that? Probably false. Okay. And I'll explain why here in a second, but it's probably false. Richard Eberhardt says 50 years. I, I guessed at that. I'm really happy that I got that right. So the debt is mainly comprised of, like I said, the severance and this retirement. Uh, it, it's pretty much being allocated to those who are not going to be working later or who are not working right now. Any attempts that have been made to lower USPS's overhead and their cost have been thwarted by Congress. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about them attempting to close branches. They've tried to close their least successful branches. And Congress has stepped in and said, no, this is a service that must be provided to the people. Everyone needs fair and easy and accommodating access to USPS facilities. 
It's like, okay, well, that's a really, really great idea, but uh, I don't want to pay for that. I'm sorry, okay? If you live in some really tiny town that has 300 people in it and you have a post office there that loses money every single month, I am paying to keep that open. It's not the government paying. The government uses my tax dollars. I shouldn't have to pay for that to stay open. I'm sorry if we can't offer reasonable accommodations to 100% of the world, but if we have our bottom 10% of our post offices bleeding a majority of the cost just to keep them in operation, there's a, that's a great way to be able to make the company profitable again. And then on top of that, remember all the efforts that were made to stop Saturday delivery? Congress stepped up again and said, hey, no, this is the gold standard. This is how we expect it. This is how we want things here in America. This is what people demand and what people need. We need Saturday delivery. Okay. We really don't. I would be perfectly fine if I didn't get any mail on Saturday. And I'm sure most of you would be too, if it meant that we could keep things the way they are. That's the American way. Keep things the way they are. This is no different than when we've tried countless times to get rid of the penny. Okay. The American government loses money. Every single time we make a penny, we lose money on that penny, that same penny, which we ultimately destroy later. Why are we making pennies still? Why can't everything be rounded off to the nearest nickel? Other countries have done this. Okay. I don't want to sound like a damn boomer here, but other countries have done this and pulled this off. Now, when we talk about privatization, I understand it sounds like a very scary prospect. Oh my God, a private entity is going to be in charge of handling our mail. Okay. Well, we have that now. There's private companies that handle our mail currently. If you're saying, well, I'm worried about our first class mail. I'm worried about our envelopes and our letters and our bills. It's going to be fine. Okay. Other countries have done this. This is an important thing to realize. I think there's some confusion here when we talk about privatization here in America. Switzerland, Japan, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, Germany, they've got private mail systems. And the most brilliant one of them all, okay, is the Japan Post. The way they've done this is fascinating. And I strongly recommend if you've never heard of Japan Post, go look into it. Go look into it how, how it works. They privatized 10 years ago, okay? 10 years ago, they privatized their company. And they even split it. We have the Japan Post, which, uh, is they, which got split down. There's Japan, uh, Japan the Bank, Japan Holdings, and Japan, the insurance entity, and they broke it down to three entities, and they made a percentage of it available for the consumers to be able to buy shares. They made a percentage available for a private business to own shares, and, and then they created essentially room for innovation within the market. Last year, okay, remember, USPS lost $8 billion. What do you think Japan Post did last year? Okay, Japan Post, $3.8 billion in profits last year. Okay. That's a, that's a far cry, uh, from, from what we have going on here. Lake Tahoe Jim says USPS retirement is age 56 and a half. Now that might just be the average. I'm sure some people could start working at USPS at 18 and maybe get out of there a little bit earlier. That's just a, just a guess though. Let me look at some of these other comments. Um, those types of can be added to businesses can have drop off certain businesses. Yep. Yep. We could have a little bit of a, like a last mile delivery type situation going on. The zinc lobby is the reason <laughs> we make the penny. That is an uh, interest story, Jay, you should look into. Yeah, I would like to hear about the zinc lobby, believe it or not. That actually sounds fascinating to me. It's, it's no different than when we, uh, we could have a very long discussion regarding hemp. Okay, it's one of the greatest disservices to the United States is the fact that we can't work with hemp right now. And I strongly am in support of this legalization of nationwide marijuana uh, being passed purely for the ability to use hemp. Look at it. hemp concrete. It's stronger than our natural concrete. Hemp paper is stronger and more biodegradable. The hemp plastics that we can make that are better for the environment. It is one of the biggest disservices that the, what was, uh, what was it? The, uh, the paper industry, the logging industry, uh, thwarted down hemp. It's, it's, it's a, it's a massive disservice, but I could go on and on about that. Uh, and then we also have some tiny bits, guys. We got some little stories, not really worth, uh, doing a big old thing on them. St small stories and developing news. Uh, we have pricing options for cars. We talked about this during the 
Fall seller update 2019 have finally gone into effect. If you sell a car, you already know what's going on. It's happening. We also uh, have the annual postal rate increases. The FedEx uh, one happened on January 6th, which is tomorrow. USPS changes happen on January 26th. We have the charts available within our patron lounge currently and updated charts reflecting the UPU claim over first class mail will be updated and available by the 26th on our Bolarama Facebook page. And UPS has uh, seen changes a week ago on December 26th. Uh, on top of that, uh, you want to be cognizant of your associative cost, your increased cost of doing shipping, especially if you're working with larger and heavier items. Do not, uh, do not forget to adjust the cost of your listings appropriately and where in line with the market. Uh, also, guys, I know this week we mentioned that we are going to select a winner for the Bolarama hoodie, okay? I got some bad news. I have the hoodie. Those of you who haven't seen it yet, this thing's so so sexy looking. Look at that. Uh, I want to be clear, too. The hoodies run large, okay? You can visit our website if you want to order one. It's on the back. It says, if you don't make that money, someone else will. That's our slogan here. But uh, go pick one up. They're fantastic. Uh, the prize wheel just simply doesn't work. I ran into all kinds of logistical issues. I promise you, we're going to sort it out. I will not be keeping that. Someone's going to win that. It's going to happen. We're going to get it figured out. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about those small stories as well. Let's go ahead and move it back over here to our main chat. As you can see, our ticker's busted tonight. I forgot to fill it out. It's been a busy week, okay? Uh, you know, you get, you get your heart shattered in the middle of the week. It's really hard to get on here and handle the last of the things that you got to get done. But these things happen, and I digress. Guys, we're going to talk about pickups. I got some items this week. I got a lot of items this week. I've got four industrial size bins Ugh! of this size four bins of this size completely full of items there's no way we are going to go through all of them Ugh! ashley sims cbd oil was sa my saving grace after being prescribed opiates for 12 years all for it i am i am thrilled to hear that you have found relief that is opioid-free relief. Message us, too, after the show. We actually, uh, we, we got one of our admins, and I don't want to name names. We got her onto another, uh, another thing that she's able to take that has helped with her, uh, her chronic pain. And, uh, you know, you don't got to smoke it, none of that stuff or anything. And uh, it seems to be working out really well for her. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do this one myself. Let me get in here really quick. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, did I am sorry, I deleted the wrong message. Hold on, hold on. I did not mean to do that. Let me see what that message said. It was for the withdrawals, but still use it for pain. Yes. Yes. Definitely, 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 definitely. Uh if you're getting relief from it. And, you know, the thing is, I understand that uh, there's somewhat of a negative stigma associated with smoking pot, okay? And I will say this, not everyone should be smoking pot. And that might come across as a bit elitist, but I will say that if you do not have a job, uh, it, we're talking purely for recreational smokers, not those you, pain management, smoke as much as you want. If you're a recreational smoker, and you have the ability to work and you choose not to work, or if you have responsibilities and you choose to donk off those responsibilities so that you can smoke, you probably shouldn't be smoking. I myself, okay, I'll come out right and say it, I smoke every evening, okay? Once eight o'clock rolls around and my work's done for the day, I usually start my work day anywhere between seven and 8 a.m. And I usually punch out at about 8 p.m. Once my work is done for the day and I'm on me time, Go and smoke a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. And I smoke the oils too. None of that flour. So uh, it, 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 it does wonders uh, when done correctly and done safely and responsibly. I've never once left the house um, on it. And yeah, minus 
minus at the casino because, well, I mean, it's, it's a safe environment most times. But yeah, guys, I got four bins of items. I went to the swap meet three days in a row and I spent one day going to stores as well. It was so much fun. I can't tell you how much fun I had sourcing because I didn't source in December at all. I was purely focused on playing catch up. So I'm really, really excited that I have items to list again. I also added Daniel to my account using the multi-user access feature. So Daniel will be doing all of my listing moving forward, which means that I am going to be able to focus more on doing this production, which is something I've desperately wanted to do, but I've been bogged down by my, uh, my responsibilities to list and responsibilities to generate revenue for myself. You know, it goes without saying that the Bolarama, you know, brand, we've done so much growing over the last what, two and a half years now, but we're, we're drastically underfunded for what we do do and where we're looking to go moving forward. Flat earth guy, thank you for your support. Uh, but we're drastically underfunded. And because of that, that means that I continue to buy and I continue to sell. Um, and I think that there, for some reason, I've, I've even been accused of not actually, uh, of not actually selling online, which is a bit shocking. Uh, we've redone the, my personal eBay store. We're not going to be announcing it yet just, um, until I get a, uh, a secure PO box. Once we have that done, we're going to be making it so that any item we show on air can be purchased, uh, hopefully immediately when we do show it on air. And we're going to be evolving to that point here soon. This show is not intended as a funnel to sell items, but we want somebody who sees something. I mean, wouldn't you want that too? We want somebody who sees something if they want to buy it, to be able to buy it or to be able to say, you know, Hey, I don't really have, uh, just money to give away, but I would like to buy something you have for sale and indirectly support you. Maybe buy something that nobody else would buy or buy something that I want. So we want to get that established so that people can do that. But so where I want to start today, like I said, I went to the swap meet three days in a row. We are going to start with day three, which is today. The items that I picked up today after going to the swap meet two days in a row before that. Okay. It's important to understand that. Okay. How much would you pay? I know all the, I know what all the buttons do. Oh, Charlie Hustle. You know, you can get a virtual assistant, but there's something about having a physical assistant on site. So we're going to do day three and then maybe day two. I have so much stuff. If you guys want to stay on air, I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's expensive staying on air. Everything costs money. I bought this up for the necessity of it, but I also got it because I can make some bucks on it. Anytime I see a bag with really nice print and really nice quality, I usually jump after it. This was a Hawaii spirit bag and it just had nice stitch work here on the front. Really good overall print design, print on the inside of the arms too. You don't always see that with backpacks. These go brand new for about 30. This one's heavily used. I'm planning to get anywhere between, I don't know, 17 to $20. The reason I would have thought it'd be more, but I didn't notice there was some damage to it until I actually went to zip it up. And I had gone with someone today and we packed in a whole bunch of items on the inside. So this actually served its purpose. We paid $2 for this. Yeah, it is a really nice floral, James. I'm very pleased with the color on this. And that's another thing too, that when we move forward and we keep talking about items in the future, we're going to be talking about some of the visual aesthetics of the item. We want items that look beautiful when we photograph them, especially when we're talking about platforms like Mercari. Okay. Now I know, uh, what's his name? Path the reseller, he left already. Okay. And certain people, okay, and I will talk about them right now. Certain people will leave when I start this portion of the show. But I must stress there is education throughout. I will never, ever ask you to sit here and waste your time. Okay. We're always going to be talking about things that are going to value your business. They might not value you today, but I promise you they will value at some point in time. So I was able to get immediate value out of this because I bought this for $2. We were able to load a bunch of items into it and essentially increase my margins right there on the spot. I will flip this out on the back end. Backpacks are great, especially when they're under a pound to be able to fire these out, throw them inside of a poly bag, send them first class, make great margins on them, especially when they're visually beautiful. Oh, also guys and gals, it's 2020. Okay. None of that, uh, non-specific gender binary type statements, guys and gals, and those who do not, uh, have, uh, have identity. I still have all of these items from 
the uh, pure test. Okay, we were unable to secure the time to be able to do the interview and discussion with them. We are still planning on giving away up to ten sets of gold and silver, platinum scales, testers, diamond testers, everything. Okay, we're going to be giving away ten sets. Okay, most of them are going to be going to patrons, but non-patrons are going to be eligible too. We just got to get the interview done first. And the reason is I want to know how to be able to use all of the stuff that's included here. So that way I can help anyone who does need help. So I promise you that's on the uh, plate as well. I picked up a collection of hats. Guys, plant good seeds. She, I, these were $2 each. And uh, I asked, I'm like, hey, would you just do all three for five? She said, sure. And I hand her a $5 bill and she tried to give me $2 change back. Okay, and I stopped her. I'm like, no. No, I'm like, you actually don't owe me anything. She's like, uh, uh, uh. it took her a second. Plant good seeds, guys. Be good people. I got great hats. I got this golf hat. Okay. I expect to get on the low end, $15. Now, certain ones of these can go much, much higher. They can get up to $25, $35, $45, depending on the age. It doesn't seem horribly old, but this mesh trucker style, when it comes to, you know, oil and gas style hats, these things almost always sell to as long as they're listed well. And this is another example too of how a gorgeous photo on this hat is going to be the reason why it's going to sell. The flat earth guy, I'm listing hats right now. One of your hats is going to sell before this show ends. Okay. Just watch it. I'm, I'm planting some good seeds for you. I got another hat here too. This is a special forces hat. Okay. And it says elite special forces. This is actually an Oakley hat. Okay. Now this one's used. It's got the sweat stains on the inside. I'm going to buy one of those little brackets where I can wash this inside the washer. I'm going to get it looking good. Some of these Oakley special forces hats go for as much as 30 or $40. But frankly, if I got 20 bucks for it, I'd be more than fine with that as well. And then I got this one. Uh, this was spotted by someone I was with. This beautiful Neff beanie. And it's in great shape too. So if your head wants to look like a zebra, I mean, this is the way to do it. I believe it's going to be about $15. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to uh, like premium brands and styles and stuff to that effect, this could be part of a limited run or a special series or special style or something to that effect to where it could be worth two, three, four times as much. I have no clue. I'll tell you what, guys, we have, uh, we have technology again. If you guys didn't know this, we have technology. How about we do this? Let's do, how's that look? Okay. Let's look this up really quick. Let me, let me see if I can make this work. I got to shuffle things around. Give me one second. There we go. So we got a little window going. We're going to, we're going to look this up really quick. Those of you who have been here for a long time know that we used to do this all the time. Wow. Okay. Hold on. My computer is chugging. It does not like that. I'm doing this again. Another reason why we need a little bit of funding 46 results. There it is right there. Uh, this one's new, new with tags, uh, 25 or best offer. Let me see what completed looks like. See if any of these bad boys are actually selling. I'm not seeing any sold on that. So that might be one of those items that we need to go uh, long tail on. And that's okay if we have to go long tail. It's not the end of the world if we do. But uh, it's in really, really good condition. Probably good enough condition that I could go uh, NWOT if I had to. Because it, it looks really, really nice. Hello to you, Simply Dana. Thank you for joining in. Uh, Oakley board shorts sell well too. Yes, as long as they're authentic. Um, I'm going to change my name to Triangular Earth Guy. Yes. Uh, Perf finds for you. Hey, Jay and everyone. Happy New Year's. Finally made it. Salutations, my friend. Happy to have you as always. And I appreciate the gift you sent me. It was delicious. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I only need 3% royalty on that. Hey, royalties start at 5%, guys. Okay, don't sell yourself short. Um, 
I picked up a bag of toys from the same lady. I, I wouldn't mind getting a little bit of help identifying the set that this is from. I remember seeing somebody else with it. And I love buying these little toy grab bags. The things that I do with these after I pick out the ones that I want is I'll build lots of toys and I'll just do a toy lot on Mercari. It'll be 20 or 30 small toys. Just ask, I don't know, 20, 25 bucks sometimes. People will pay that money on that stuff. So there was a couple in here that really caught my eye and she let me do a little mix and match. We got a little Pikachu and Pikachu's always so well. Let me see if this one works. I don't know if it's, yeah, oh, it's lighting up. Nice. So this one does actually work. Uh, but this is the one that I actually needed help with. I've got these toys. Uh, actually, I got a few that I want to hand with if anybody does wish to help. I've got these. Now, they're obviously Wizard of Oz, but I don't know what set they are from. I've never seen these ones before. So if you recognize the set that these are from, I'd love to know. Um, and I'm sure there's some information on the bottom. Don't go out of your way. I'm just asking if you just recognize it from sight. Uh, but I picked those up because I thought that they might be worth a few bucks. And then this guy looks super familiar, but I cannot tell where he is from. So, oh, the Green Fairy Sleeping Beauty. Thank you for that. I totally missed that. I thought they were all Wizard of Oz. Good to know. Thank you. So uh, we got that random toy lot. I paid three bucks for that. Uh, and then honestly, what I'll do with some of the other stuff, uh, if it doesn't go to Mercari, I do these conventions. Like I'm going to be doing them twice a year now to sell trading cards, pops, action figures, collectibles. I can put a bowl like that out and I can say $2 for any figure and they will sell there. People will walk up, they'll have their kid. I'm like, oh yeah, any figure in there, it's two bucks. And they'll grab these figures and pay two bucks and I'll get a great return on investment on stuff like that. Um, I got a bunch of stuff that Susan is going to want to steal from me when she watches this episode, but I must remind you, if you're a patron, you can buy anything that you see here tonight at cost. If you plan to keep it, if you plan to sell it, you can't have it. Okay. But if you plan to keep it, something you want, I'll sell to you for cost. Every now and then we have an exception. We have one coming up here soon just because I have so much into it and I know how much money I can get out on the back end. Um, we got this. It's uh, one of those dream lights, one of those pill lights, but this one's Hello Kitty themed. These ones go for anywhere between 20 to $28, depending on the market, the condition, uh, you know, how aggressive you want to be as far as pricing. I picked this one up for $2. Um, I, I'm, I am raising my cost basis. I think I've talked about this before. I don't want to list anything that I'm going to make less than $20 on. And I know with the hats, I showed you slightly lower margins. But the way that I factor that out is that I am spending $5 on the front end and getting 55 out on the back end. And I'm aware it's spread across multiple listings, but that's how I'm factoring that out when I'm doing those individual deals. If you thought that other plush was cute, I've been buying a lot of stuff specifically because it has visual appeal on Mercari. And I know people are going to buy things because they look nice. Wow, wow, Wubsy for the yellow cat. I'll have to look that up after the show. Thank you, Beth. Check out this cutie. Okay. This is a Katsu, what's the brand again? Hold on. Um, Nakajima, the original makers of the Hello Kitty plush. If you remember that post that we put up on Facebook with me and Susan holding a giant Hello Kitty, that was a Nakajima as well. Uh, great condition. It's got the little beanies in the butt. Uh, so it's a nice little heavy one. Uh, and this thing will definitely sit up on its own. No problem. I'll probably get 25 to 30 bucks for this on Mercari because someone's just going to buy it because it's a beautiful looking Hello Kitty. I paid, I think, $2 for this one. And then, yeah, we got a whole, I, I got so much plush, guys. Look at this one. Again, another example of a very, very visually appealing plush. And this will probably be 15 to $20 on Mercari. And I'm willing to work with a lower cost basis on Mercari because uh, pretty things just sell. Why not? So I picked up a Tom Nook. This might be a keeper. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, but this was part of a bundle buy. All of this stuff came from the same person. Look how adorable this is. This is an Eeyore wearing a dinosaur outfit. Okay. And I'm probably going to put that Eeyore with this Eeyore who is just the cutest thing in the world. Look at that. He's uh, dressed up as a flower or a plant, I believe. 
Super, super cute. These two together, I'll probably get, I don't know, 15 to $20 on Mercari as a, as a, uh, as a little bundle lot. I can't see a reason why I wouldn't get that. I want to make sure this isn't stitched up incorrectly back here. This might even open up further. I don't know. I don't want to break it, but uh, really cute looking stuff here. Pam says, I sell a lot of stitches on Mercari. 100% believe that. Yeah, and it is a very cute and very unique one. Some more water one. Here's a bear, okay? This is why I tell people, slow down, and if you see something you do not recognize, look it up, okay? Would you have bought this bear with this really cruddy looking tag, okay? This is a Los Angeles County Sheriff bear by Plushland. It's got a little belt on it and everything. It's cute, okay? Would you believe me if I told you that multiple of these have sold for $30 over the last six months? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about. Look everything up. It takes 30 seconds. And I understand. I don't want to look up. So I've heard people. I don't want to look up hundreds of items each day. This isn't the right job for you then. Okay. I don't care how long I've been doing this. The odds of me finding a duplicate item are slim. You just got to look stuff up. The whole reason we have these discussions is so that you can get familiar with the idea and familiar with the fact that there are items that you might not think are worth money that are actually worth money. I will get $30 for this little guy. Okay. Question in you, you on manage payment payments yet. When are we forced to move to manage payments? Thunks. Answer your question. You have less than six months. Everyone will be on it, and that's based on eBay 2019, eBay Open event, and what Devin said himself. Um, it's going to happen to everyone. It's not going to be as painful as a lot of people think it is. We have a plan in place for those who do not have a bank account. You know who you are who do not have bank accounts who would like to be able to be on managed payments. Contact us. We can get you the information, but we will be doing a special beforehand. Um, Pam says, wow, they usually hand them out to small children to keep them calm during situations. That might explain why this is so rare. Now they have a larger version. The larger version, uh, I think is actually worth less, but I was very, very pleased to get this one with the tag. It says nine, nine, nine for kids. I'm sure that's maybe like a call in help number. Uh, will they let you use your balance to pay for shipping like Mercari? No, they will not let you use your balance to pay for shipping like Mercari. And here's the thing. You should, at this point, be on pirate ship. If you're not using pirate ship, you're throwing money away. We do not get paid to say that anymore. We used to get paid to say that, but pirate ship is the only way that you can access cubic shipping without having to pay a monthly fee like you would with stamps.com or with Shippo or with FitShipper. Okay, so get on there, start saving money, and with that, you front load your shipping cost. And, uh, you know, no disrespect to you, Charlie Hustle, but uh, I always tell people that if you're running that thin to where you might be concerned about your shipping cost with your business, like not having the money for it, you may want to consult with somebody about how you can either increase your margins or increase the amount of money that you're holding on the back end, uh, just some way to tighten up your business so that those changes won't negatively impact your brand moving forward. But again, no disrespect when I say that. Um, a and M Hunter says, how do we move over right now? You cannot move over right now. You have to wait till you get invited or until you are forced to move over. There is no way to do it now. And I actually would not suggest that you attempt to move over whatever benefit you feel you are getting. It's probably not going to be there for you. Okay. And again, no disrespect. It's certain type of people are going to benefit from being on managed payments initially, but a majority of people will not benefit. Hence why it's better to wait till everyone has to do it. So that way we are all on the same playing field with each other. Charlie Hesson said, Oh, I see. I didn't realize there was a difference between parcel select and cubic massive difference between the two. Absolutely massive. Okay. This is a cubic four. Who remembers my cubic class? I have all of my boxes still. Okay. This box is 18 inches by eight inches by four and a half inches. Okay. Why does this matter? Anything that fits in this box. Okay. Will act as a flat rate up to 20 pounds anywhere in America. And if this sounds like nonsense to you, go watch my cubic training class. Okay? It's like 30 or 40 minutes long, but it will save you hundreds of dollars every year on your shipping cost. 
Okay. And the difference with a pirate ship is that you are front loading your ship cost. Okay. So you have to deposit at least $10 when you buy your labels. I have them take $100, and once I get to zero, they take another $100 out again. I used to do $500, okay? but it's, that was too much volatility uh, in my accounting for me to be okay with doing that. So I do $100 at a time. But yes, Pam, I have every one of these boxes still. They're great resources. And Cubic works on Softpack. It's a cubic four. Anything you can fit inside of this up to 20 pounds anywhere in America runs on a flat rate chart. It's important to know these things. I'm going to say this right now, okay? Go watch all of my training videos. Don't go back and watch all the reseller roundups, okay? You can watch the reseller roundups in the background while you're listing, but we have a training videos playlist. The most recent one was how to find and execute a bulk buy. If you haven't seen that, Go watch that, let the playlist just start playing. It is the most concise and comprehensive information on the topic of reselling that you will find anywhere online. When, when people ask, like I've had people ask, like what does the Patreon money actually do? The Patreon money allows me to stop everything I'm doing, grab cameras, lights, a green screen, a set, bring, I, I, there's so many cables that go into what I am doing. It blows people's mind. The amount of tech that I have just in this room to be able to do what I'm doing. I have 30 video ideas that I want to do all on the topic of being better resellers. And I simply don't have the time to do them. All of this takes up way too much time. And that's where the funding comes into play because I can source less items, make more money and, or, or make less money there and make the money through doing this. But one day I hope. Um, let me look at the rest of these comments. Uh, I need to check that out. hundred percent need to check that out. Uh, Pam, if you want it mind, do you think we could post up the link to the playlist, the training playlist, and maybe make sure it includes the cubic training somewhere on there as well. If not, we can get posted to our main page. Thank you. Mm, am I going to be able to pay as I go on pirate ship prepay a minimum $10. Okay. And, uh, and again, and again, uh, your business should be in a position to where you can absorb, frankly, $100 worth of shipping at a time. Because if you're spending 100 on shipping, you should be selling $1,000 plus worth of items. Okay? And if you're not, something's going wrong somewhere. Okay? And we can talk. I have said this before. Whether you're a patron or not, if you want to talk to me, okay, I'm available. Send me a message on Facebook, send me a message on Instagram, and if you desperately need, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but if your business is in a place where you don't want, where you want to fix things, let's say you had a bad Q4 for 2019 and you just want to talk to an expert for a little bit, I'll do it for free. I really will. We'll do free consulting. I will call you for my personal cell phone number this week, okay? Just send a message to me or one of the admins. I will call you personally and we will talk about your business. I got no problem doing that. And if you like what you hear and you want to take the sales pitch and go check out Patreon, great. But if not, let's just have a talk. I want everyone to make money. People don't realize that. I give away this information for free so that we can all make more money. Check this out. I got a, I got a Carmen San Diego and her legs are clear. Now, I don't know if this is the expensive variant or if this is the common variant. This is a loose Funko Pop figure. Now, I did get another Funko Pop that was loose. It was Marce, Marcine? Marceline, Marceline from Adventure Time. And I bought it for 50 cents and I just gave it to Daniel, kindness of my heart. And I later look it up and it turns out it's a $24 figure loose. Okay. This one I didn't look up. I just think Carmen San Diego is cool. I paid a dollar for her. She might be worth, I don't know, 20 or 20 cents. I have no clue, but I just went ahead and got her anyways. And there's a good handful of items that I just bought for the sake of buying today. Sue me, you know. This item is not available for patrons at the discounted rate. It's rare when I say that. This may be the coolest item that I found all weekend at the swap meet. And I am not just hyping this up. This thing is awesome. I wrapped it in plastic because I didn't want the dirt from my hand to get on it. And I didn't want the dirt from the other items to get on it. Who is ready to see this bad boy? This is in and out Christmas lights. And there's a whole flipping string of them that are different. 
And they're amazing too. Like I opened up the box a little bit and there's ones that are like the different in and out signs on the inside and different palm trees. And the whole thing is new on the interior. I negotiated $1 off of this item. She wanted 15. I got her down to 14. She knew what she had. She knew she had a night. Oh, well, she wanted 20 initially. And I, and I countered at 10. She said 15. I said, let me give you 12. She said, no, I said 13. She said, no, she said, I said 14. That way I can feel like a winner right now. She's like, okay, I'll do 14. Okay. Is it a local restaurant? It's a, it's a West coast thing. Maybe I don't, I don't think it's local though, per se. Um, but yeah, in and out burgers, uh, this here goes anywhere between 60 to $100 on eBay for a brand new set. This is brand new. It's really, really nice. But, uh, yeah, anytime you see anything in and out, I promise you it is worth stopping and investigating what you have. Yes. That yummy secret menu. You get them fries twice to baked and then you get the grilled onions on top. Animal style, ooh, ooh, you already know. Is anyone buying me in and out tonight? I could really go for some in and out. I got a new piece for the set. Check this out. I got a UPS truck. Yeah, I paid a dollar for it. I just thought it would be nice set decor. It's gonna go. Uh, it's gonna go back here someplace. And we also have some items from last week. Thank you again, Pam, for your amazing gift. Thank you again, uh, Future Fortunes, for your gift uh, from your mother. I appreciate it greatly. So, yes, it's a very cute truck. And then I also have, check this out. I found this plush today. It is a Land Before Times plush. Uh, needs a little bit of cleanup, but not much. I paid a dollar for this. Okay, and it's vintage too. It says Toy Network on the tag. Uh, doesn't have a year if I had to, t oh wait, this one might. Uh, Universal Studios. If I had to take a guess on the era, I would say early 90s, maybe, give or take. Hello to you, Mindy. But uh, yeah, lots of plush. And then I've been buying these up like mad. These little TY McDonald's uh, toys with the tags. I've been getting these for so cheap. I just have a feeling that I'm going to do well on these on Mercari. I'm also considering branding these as cat toys. Uh, my, my, uh, my friend had mentioned that she, she has her, has these for her cats and they love them. Okay. So I'm considering branding them that way, but these aren't the last of the ones that you're going to see. I probably have 15 of them at this point. I paid anywhere between 33 cents to 50 cents for them. I planned a lot of them out. I think I'm going to do fine on them. They're just a fun little thing to kind of collect while I'm out sourcing. And then I got this guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, it's a Sega toy. If I had, I think it's from the game Zapper but I've never seen this before in toy form. I paid 33 cents for this guy too. It's going to require a little bit of additional research, but just kind of a cool piece to see. And then a few more toys. Again, like I said, I'm going to be able to throw these into my convention bin. We got uh, Mr. Krabs from uh, SpongeBob. And then we've got this one. This is cool. This is from one of the... Uh, Treehouse of Terror, Halloween, Simpsons specials. This is, uh, I think it's itchy. And then I also got a Playmobil figure. Don't ask me why. I, I got it for 33 cents. Because sometimes you go to these tables and they're like three for a dollar, three for a dollar. And you find two and you're like, okay, I'm going to grab the one thing that if I get a few more of these, I can actually sell them. So I went ahead and got the Playmobil toy just because. Now, those are the items that I got today, which is the third day in a row of going to the swap meet. Pretty good haul, right? I think I'm maybe, I don't know, 25 bucks in, and I expect to get, I don't know, like 200 bucks out. So it's not a bad outing. Now we're going to look at, now we're going to look at what I got yesterday. Now, yesterday's haul, hooey, hooey, am I excited about these ones? This is going to be the last bin, guys. I've been on air for two hours and 20 minutes already. I'm exhausted. I would like to enjoy the rest of my night. And you guys know what happens when 8 p.m. hits over here on the West Coast as well. So we're going to take a look at these ones. We're going to have our final thought, 
and then we're going to wrap up for the week and then we'll be back next week. Okay. Um, as always, that's what we do here. Um, this first item, oh, this is so cool. I didn't look it up. I didn't have to look it up. I'm going to tell you, I think it's worth maybe 60 plus. This is just based on intuition, based on the brand and the work that I've done with it before. Check out this amazing owl. Look how cool this is. Okay. This isn't just a normal owl. Okay. No, no, no. This is a puppet and it has a, yeah, look at that. This is a really high quality owl. It's very, very soft to the touch. You can see really nice, high quality fab, uh, fibers. This is a Folk Manis brand. I've seen this brand in high-end gift shops before. Yes, of course I bought an owl. Yes, of course I bought an owl. Uh, there's money to be made. I've got to make that money. I know some of you understand that I have an aversion to owls. I had an ex that was obsessed with owls, but old news, I'm over it. So I picked this guy up. I paid $3 for this owl. Uh, I haven't looked it up, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get some decent bucks for it. <laughs> no exorcist head. Tell me that's not a quality plush. If you saw that for $3, you got to pick it up. Maybe if we reach some of our funding goals, a &M Hunter, I'll do some skits. And I'll tell you right now, I hired a voice actor for a piece that was supposed to be done today. I have all of the materials. I simply don't have the time to get it assembled. I was going to play a character. I was going to play the role of Jordan Sweetnam in the video, but I simply didn't have the time. So I don't know if I'm going to have to scrap the material or if I'm just still going to shoot it anyways, but I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, up next... Five copies of World of what is it? World of Simulators for the PlayStation 4. Uh, all of these are all in great condition. These appear to be customer returns or item rejects. Uh, yeah, these are made uh, region free, so they'll work anywhere in the world, which is fantastic. This is a hard game to come by. This sells anywhere between thirty to forty dollars used consistently with solid sales history on it. It's considered a rare game on the PlayStation 4. I paid $10 a copy, and trust me, I tried to negotiate. This lady would not take nine a copy. I asked her, I'm like, you know, if I buy all five, will you do nine each? Nope, wouldn't budge at all. But she knew that, you know, that she was going to get 10. If I didn't buy it, somebody else would. Pam says, Jay, that owl sold on eBay for $61. It's my intuition for you right there. And I swear to you, I didn't look it up. Because, I mean, if you see that for $3 at the swap meet, you're not going to stop and look the thing up. So, yeah. I'm going to sell these minimum $30 each. It's going to be about $15 profit per copy across the board. $15 at $5, $75 out on the back end. I, I paid more than I wanted to, but I'm not going to say no to a free $75. It was my choice. Do I want the $75 or not? And I said, yeah, I want it because it's one listing and five packages. It's not that bad. So when you see opportunities like that, seize them, guys. You know, and I told the lady, I'm like, you know, she said, if you buy everything, I'll give you a better deal. And she only had five copies of that. Everything else was maybe like eight to $10 PlayStation 4 games. And I said, I would buy a hundred copies of that, but you only got five of those. So, oh, and I'm, I'm not scared. It's time. It's time. Uh, I picked up another bag of toys. Uh, I think that the piglet inside of the tub might be the most valuable thing in here, but this was only $2. And I have a friend who wanted one of these little Hello Kitties. She glues them to the insides of her car. But uh, yeah, I'm not even going to open it. It's just one of those things. Might as well snag it. Oh, and another reason I paid $14 on those lights is because that was the first time I had ever worked with that vendor. And she had some of the coolest stuff out there I'd ever seen. And I knew that it was going to be worth uh, worth the trouble to build that bridge with her. She said she's going to be out there every Sunday this year. So I said, okay, I'll pay you $14. bucks. i am fine with that. Whoa. Pam says, if you find the monkey folk manis, it's sold for $150 pre-owned. Wow. That is shocking. Uh, I also picked up this one. I don't know if this is a puppet or what. Yeah, it's a, it's a hand puppet. You can't control the mouth, but you can control the arms. Uh, this brand on this one, I've never seen this before. Anya. Anya International. It says another by Anya International. It's a, it's a moose. A little bit on the heavy side. It's definitely over a pound. I paid a dollar for that. 
anytime I can get a quality puppet for a dollar, three dollars, I'm going to go ahead and take it. Um, that same lady who sold me the owl, I bought this from her too. I paid two dollars for it. Uh, this is a, a Russ toy, and it what is it? Early eighties. Uh, it doesn't have the year on it, but it's a cute one. And I've seen similar monkeys like this before do well. Um, yeah, great little toy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll get, I don't know, 20 bucks on something like that. And again, I must stress, guys, it's important to understand. If you are low on funds, okay, don't randomly be buying things. Okay. Don't, when I'm saying like, I think I'm going to get this on, I think I'm going to get that on it. It's a lot of experience speaking there. When I'm buying these little grab bags, don't do like I do. If you don't have much money or if you don't have other avenues to sell, go after the established items that I'm talking about. Go after like the Christmas lights and the video games and, uh, like certain brand new plush that has an established history of selling and making money. Those are the things you want to focus on when you have a little more money and a little more freedom. That's when you can start making better buying, uh, decisions, bigger range and stuff like that too. I picked up this other Hello Kitty with the Cubs branding on it. I looked this one up last night just as a curiosity. This came paired with a blanket and it sells for about $25 or $30 on eBay. This is a standalone piece. I'll probably get $15 to $20 bucks for it. Odds are Susan's going to want to steal this one too. Uh, but I, I couldn't pass on it for $2. Uh, we all had that monkey. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to get a, a couple of bucks on that. It's, it's something that people remember. People are going to want to have again. I got more of those little ones that I was telling you about. I really did get a whole lot of those. I got a, uh, was it stay or state stay puff stay puff marshmallow dude. I paid a dollar for him again. At a dollar, I'm not going to lose money on this. I don't have any comp information on it whatsoever. I got another decor piece. This is a solid metal. Uh, it's a giant jack. Uh, this is just going to go somewhere in the pat in the back. Stay puffed. I stay away from plushes for the most part. A and M Hunter, you're missing out on some big big bucks. Plush is one of the easiest categories to work. Most of it's under a pound. You can ship it inside of a bag. Uh, just double up a poly bag if you need to. And yes, a cast iron jack. Uh, yeah, so plush. I make a fortune on plush. Uh, several thousand dollars a year in plush. Uh, Pam, you're going to love this one. Even you too, Mindy. Check this out. I picked up this Build-A-Bear Sully. Okay, even got the little butt tag and everything. Got the little uh, Build-A-Bear tag over here. This guy is still soft and damn near new. One dollar. One dollar is what she asked for it. And I was blown away. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, yeah. All of the plush over there are a dollar. I'm like, all of them? And then I pick this up. Look at this guy. Super soft, cuddly. This is Mercari gold. These giant stuffed animals. Okay, people love this stuff. This is a hug fun from Kowloon, Hong Kong. That's crazy. Kowloon, the, that's where the walled city was. But yeah, she, I'm like, even this one, she's like, yeah, it's a dollar. And this thing feels brand new. It doesn't feel like it's been sitting out of the swap meet. And yeah, Easter is coming up. When you see stuff like this and stuff like this for a dollar, it's free money. They're just giving the stuff away. It's free real estate, guys. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you what, okay? I get it. We've looked at enough plush. I'll show you some items that aren't plush now, okay? I picked up one of these. A, uh, what is it, Turbo Flare? These come in sets of eight. Uh, eight pack is almost $200, okay? People really, really like having these things in sets. A standalone flare like this is about $20 on its own. Definitely good ones to look for if you see them. Don't overlook them. Uh, here's an interesting one. Okay. Uh, this is a Whitman classic. Who is the thief deck? And it is in immaculate condition, potentially unplayed. Those edges look brilliant. Okay. Even has the original pricing tag on the front. This is a $30 game, $30 for this classic Whitman. And that's in general condition. I might get 50 bucks for this thing. Okay. That's 
bonkers. And I and you know what's crazy? Daniel talked to this person the night before, went through the box, didn't stop and look this up. He did the classic mistake that I talk about all the time. He assumed that this was worthless. Richard Eberhardt, third sale during the show. It's those Patreon dollars at work right there, buddy. That's what we do for our uh, for our loyal supporters. We, in, we increase their sales over two and a half hours. But yeah, this right here, free money. Okay. Sounds like Matthew Lesko from the old commercial, free money. Yeah. yeah. You should look up free real estate on YouTube. Check that one out. You'll enjoy that. Uh, now, while I was there, I also found this one. Okay. Animal Remy. Now, what's really great about this is there's no comps on this one. Okay. Animal Remy sells, but this is a very, very old version of Animal Remy. And while I was there... Check this one out. Have you ever seen this? Uno horses. Yeah. This is 30 to $50 on eBay. 30 to 50 flipping dollars for Uno horses. Okay. And I bought it for two bucks. Two bucks. Okay. These cards look like they haven't even been played. Yeah, look at this. And they're crisp, but they're clean. They're white. Very nice. Mind blown. This is what I'm talking about, guys. There's nothing. I I, I must stress this, okay? Somebody opposed a question. I believe it was Mr. Exquisite, actually. Posed a question within uh, Facebook. And he asked, like, essentially, like, what's your motivation for doing this? And I said, this is frankly the easiest money of my entire life. Okay. It is super easy to do this. All I do is I go shopping all day and I look up things I've never seen before. And then I buy them and then go and sell them to other people. That is it. And I can go to the swap meet any day of the week. And if, and and here's the thing, if I did the entire swap meet in one day, it'd probably take me five or six hours. I could pull a thousand dollars worth of profit out of a swap meet visit. Okay. And those of you who don't know, okay, I do on site visits. I will come to your town and I will train you right there. What I do is not hard. I literally get out of the car, go talk to people, look up a bunch of items, spend almost no money. Okay. These three pieces cost me a total of $4. Okay. We have, I'm probably going to get 40 bucks for this just because the maybe even 50 because the condition's so nice. So we got 40 and I'm probably going to get 40 and 40 for these ones as well. It's $120 back on a $4 investment. Okay. And, and you've seen all the other nonsense I've got too. And we talk about this. There's so much stuff that I get that I, I if, if somebody gave me this for free and said I had to keep it, I wouldn't keep it. I wouldn't want it. Okay. But as inventory, I am thrilled to get this to the end user, the person who's going to enjoy it and love it. That's what this is about. It's so flipping easy. And frankly, like, I don't have time for people's excuses, okay? If you have a medical condition, bless you. I understand how difficult this job can be. And I'm not trying to discount those people at all. If you have things that are making this job harder than it would be for most people, my thoughts go out to you, okay? But if you are a, you know, if you are American born and raised, you know, capable individual who isn't making at least a minimum of $2,000 a month doing this, you're doing something wrong. You are not putting the time and effort into it. I guarantee you on that. So much more that you could be doing. It's so easy to do this. Do you, do you got to sales early? I show up a hour early, lots of great deals when it's early. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, today I arrived at 11 and I left at 1. And yesterday I arrived at 11 and I left at one. And the day before that I arrived at 5 PM and left at 7 PM. It was the night swap meet. I make no efforts to get there early at all. Okay. And the reason why I started with day three things is because I wanted to show people, even though it was three days later, you have to keep in mind. Okay. There's always going to be pickers out there. You just have to be that much better than the other people who are out there. Some people will get their competitive advantage by getting there earlier. What I have seen historically is the people who get there very early are looking for one specific thing. 
It's because they are not good that they have to find that one thing. That can be anything from Hot Wheels to uh, trading cards to video games. In particular, I see a lot of video games and vintage toys. Those people will go there. They got to get there early because they're competing against all the other people within that exact same very finite category. When you're like me and you're willing to buy literally anything to make a buck, Oh, I will. I don't care what it is. I have sold uh, adult undergarments for incontinence. I've sold the wafers for them. I've sold syringes. I've sold lingerie. I have sold. Uh, I have sold adult materials. I've sold everything under this. I have adult stuff on my website right now for sale. I have everything under the sun for sale. If you're not willing to, if you're willing to not discriminate against the inventory, and you're willing to look anything up to try and turn a profit, you're going to be successful. This isn't a hard job, okay? It's easy. It's, 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 it's more than easy. It's fun. And that's why I try and explain to people this is a fun process. Simply Dana said, there's a swap meet less than 10 minutes from me. Still trying to, f- trying to find time to get there, okay? That's my January 2020 goal is to go there this month. I'll tell you, if it's your first time going, you might want to wait till it's a little warmer because you might not have the best of experiences. But what I will say is you definitely do want to go. And uh, swap meets, another word for it is flea markets uh, or boot sales. Uh, they're not the only thing that I do. I went thrifting this week. I have a bin of thrifted items. And if you guys want, I might tear into that right now too. But uh, yeah, I do all of these things. And, and just go have fun with it. It's not hard. John Gabriel says, just sold an old Quaker Oats cookie tin for $10. It's Patreon doing magic for you, my friend. Charlie Hustle, I just found out, found a niche nobody competes for. And that is amazing. I'm going to tell you right now, keep it to yourself, buddy. Yeah, no no hard feelings at all. If you got something that's working for you and you can make some great money, go for it. But I'll tell you, and some people ask me this too, like, is, Jay, is there anything that you get that you don't show on air? And I say, nope. I show 100% of what I get on air. Now, I might not continue to talk about a certain item after I've shown it on air because it's something that I enjoy working with, but I feel that there should be a certain level of honesty in what I do. If I say I'm doing a certain amount of work and I'm getting a certain amount of things, I should be transparent about it. And I like the fact that I can be fact-checked. You can go visit my eBay store. You can go see my completed listings. You can see what things sold for. You can see uh, what I have available now. You can see what didn't sell. All of it's out there, and I can't think of another person who does the YouTubes who offers that level of transparency. And I just I don't want to I don't want to BS anyone. Okay, A and M Hunter says biggest flip ever. I purchased a copy of Spud's Adventure for five thousand dollars, and I sold it for eighty five hundred dollars. It's probably one of my biggest sales. Uh, Mindy says, you should, you should do well, join Patreon and we can help you do more. hundred percent true. Yeah, our Patreon team is fantastic. Uh, Charlie Hustle says too low ball for you. Uh, you know, if it's in quantity, I'm willing to work with anything. I really am. Even if the margins are smaller, if it's list one and be done, just like when I talked about with the bulk buying video, if you haven't seen that, please go check it out. It's such a fun video that I shot. Uh, I was standing in the middle of a bulk buy and some of the items that I'm selling, I paid two seventy five for, and they're getting sold for, uh, five fifty six dollars $6. So, you know, I'll work on micro margins when it comes into scale. Um, let's see what else we got here. I don't worry about competing resellers in the same niche. Plenty for everyone. Generally speaking, there's plenty, plenty for everyone. Lee James says with the private chat, it pays for itself as a Patreon. Yes. Yes, it does. And I'll be honest. If I wasn't the one running this operation, if somebody else had this going and they had a group chat, I would pay to be in it because I use it myself. And you guys know as well as I do, I am not ashamed to ask for help. If I come across a piece of glass or Tupperware or a signature I can't read or something like that, I ask you guys for help because I think it's worth the value um, just just for that alone. Um, I apologize if I missed anyone's comment. Let's take a look at a couple more items. I got a few more from today I want to show you. Or excuse me, from yesterday. I got two more sets of cards. What I really like, look at the back. It says 29 cents. It was stamped on there. We have crazy faces and hearts. And what I really like about this one is that this is the older version of the two. There's a more modern one, but there's something about the whole, you know, the red skin 
that doesn't necessarily fly nowadays. It's kind of iconic of our past. I really like seeing that. So I'm going to list these two together as a set once I open them up and get a little more information about the brand and completeness and stuff like that. On the low end, I'm expecting 15, but with items like this, you never know how crazy it could get. Uh, I'm into them for a dollar. It could go much higher. Follow our Facebook page. When they do sell, I will let you know on there as well. Um, thank you, Pam. If you're taking off, I appreciate... Oh, I'm good luck. Okay, you're staying here too. Had two sales since the start. Congratulations. Let me see if I have any sales so far. Um... Just a payment received on an item, not an actual sale, but you never know. I did sell from last week. I don't know if you guys uh, remember me talking about this. This just sold on Mercari just now. It's a Simpsons uh, Santa's Little Helper pill plush that sold for 13 bucks. And I know it's a small sale, uh, but you know I was into it for 50 cents. And I can't say no to free money. And the reason why I'm willing to work with smaller items on Mercari is because I'm trying to establish my account over there. I want to get up over 100 feedback. I did notice that once I got past about 10 or 15, my sales started becoming very much so more consistent after that. I don't have to constantly promote items and push stuff for things to actually start selling. Anyone know what this is from? Anyone recognize this? Like, part of me is leaning towards Garfield, but I... F it says, did Lena on the tag. I've, I, I can't remember where that's from. It's really cute, though. Uh, I picked this up as part of a lot. This was part of the lot. It's a very, very freaky-looking T.Y. cat person. I just thought this was hilariously creepy, and I went ahead and got that. Again, three for a dollar. Uh, and then I got a couple other little smalls. That guy's cute. It's from that Pets Life movie. And then another one of these little cat toys. I'm going to let you know how marketing them as cat toys actually works. Is an estate liquidation store worth a visit? That's a tricky question. I would say any store that's selling stuff is worth visiting at least once. Even if they're not necessarily a consignment store or not necessarily a, a thrift store per se, I would say that it's going to be worth the effort to at least check it out, establish a contact, uh, maybe be known as somebody that can buy in quantity or he's telling like, hey, if you get something that's not necessarily great for local and you're looking for somebody to work with it, I might be able to work with it. It might be worth going and checking out. You can't, I mean lose an hour of your life if nothing else, but it's always good to build rapport and uh, develop new contacts whenever possible. Uh, toy, bins, toy bins are decimated within 10 minutes. Yeah, that's going to happen sometimes. It definitely can happen. And yeah, that's the thing with the pricing. Whenever you're working directly with resellers, there's always going to be that that uh, understanding of if they are as good as you are, that you're not going to make any money. But I encounter resellers who are trash at what they do all day long. Because you have to keep in mind, if I go to a swap meet, I am working with resellers. All of these items here are purchased from people selling stuff with the attempt to make as much money as they can. The person who sold me the Christmas lights, they believed that they were not going to get anything more than $14 for them, okay? And, and for some resellers, that's going to be the peak of their ability, whether they are ineligible or unable or unwilling to start selling online, they're going to get the max that they believe that they can get. Now, I have a different set of beliefs. I believe that I'm going to be able to get up to $100 for that. And you know what's really wild and crazy? Somebody could buy that off of me for $100 and say, man, that guy's stupid. I can't believe he sold me this brand new set for 100 bucks." And then they have their specialty client who collects in and out goods that they deal with who's over in, I don't know, over in some fancy country on the other side of the world, and they sell it to him for $500. Okay. We don't know where the end of the line is. We just make as much money as we can on the items that we have. You just never know. So... Another Hello Kitty. This is a backpack. Uh, this is going to be an easy sale on Mercari. I'll get $20 for this. No problem. Uh, I've been going after more uh, visually aesthetic items for my Mercari store. This hits all the marks to a T. Needs a light amount of cleaning up and then it's going to be good to go. 
Charlie Hustle says, that is the nice thing about the bins that I go to. Once you become a regular, they help educate you. No honor once they yell shop, though, lol. Sorry, I couldn't understand that last part, unfortunately. Uh, we also picked up, check these out, these marble-like, extra-thick professional dominoes. Doesn't professional have two Fs? Professional dominoes. Really good condition. Original instructions. Really good-looking dominoes. And, uh, yeah, I paid a dollar for this. I saw a comp. I didn't do much research on this because I had a dollar and it didn't really matter. The first comp I saw said 27. It might not be the cheapest. I'm just telling you what I saw. Uh, again, a dollar. And this can go in a small flat rate, padded flat rate, or even cubic one if necessary. Or if cheapest, let me say. Uh, guys, there's 42 of you here. Have you, have you all done me the solid of clicking that like button yet? That does help us out so much. Because I've noticed we only have 38 likes. It'd be really appreciated if you click that button. Thank you, guys. Let's take a look at a few more items. Hey, who wants to find me a comp on this one? I looked on eBay and I didn't see a thing. Okay, check this out. This is a Wyatt Earp game. Wyatt! Wyatt Earp! The old, uh, the old gunslinger. Okay. Uh, it's fairly complete. It's missing a couple of small things. But uh, it has the instructions. You know, what's, you know what's so dumb of me? I am such an idiot for not doing this. I didn't even look at the board yet. And I probably should have done that first. But uh, I got this for $3. It's a little crispy. But uh, overall, very cool. I could not find a comp on eBay. I did see other Wyatt Earp versions of the game that did not... Uh, that did not go for much more than about 30 bucks. This one, because of how rare it is, I'd like to think I can get double or if not triple that. Some board games just go for copious amounts of money. Uh, but it's, look, even look at these instructions. These are so old. You can tell just by the font alone how old this bad boy is. What year is it? Great question. Oh my gosh, is this old. 1958. Holy cow. Thank you, Mindy. I know you're on the hunt right now. I truly appreciate it. Highly relevant commenter. Bolo, a game called Public Assistance about being on welfare goes over $100. Easy. I 100% believe that. And isn't it kind of ironic that the people who would be buying and playing that game, just, I mean, the fact that they, they would have the money to spend on it and then they would be playing it. I mean, it's just kind of, I don't know. It's interesting. Bonnie K says, I have a hard time with regional package shipping. Can anyone explain it? Regional packaging means that it's going to be going to your region. Regional, regional A is the closest areas to you. Regional B is slightly further away. And regional C is an old-timey option that got phased out. If you have any of the old regional C boxes, you can treat them as priority. And... The idea is, is that it was going to save you money on your packages that were somewhat heavy that weren't going to be going that far. And it was essentially cheaper than using a flat rate for locations that were closer to you. However, since cubic shipping became available to everyone through pirate ship, I have not used a single regional box since then. Now, historically, when... Uh, cubic shipping wasn't available to everyone for free, it would make sense to use regional boxes from time to time. But now, cubic shipping is almost always going to be cheaper than using regional shipping. If you're not familiar with cubic shipping, visit and watch my cubic training video on my YouTube channel. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe, but visit and watch that video. It will tell you everything you need to know about cubic. It's 100% free to use for the life that you want to use it. So, Definitely check that out. Hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. If anyone else has any other questions, feel free to ask them. Okay. Uh, we are also accepting new subscribers and likes and whatever else right now. Hey, people, check their food stamp balance with $800 phones. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, isn't it kind of crazy how, uh, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't even say that. But yeah, 100% right there with you on that. Did you know here in California... They had to make it so that you can't use your EBT cash at uh, casinos, strip joints, and tattoo shops. They literally had to put that into law. 
because people were going to tattoo shops and withdrawing all their EBT cash. Um, Mindy, were you able to find anything out about that Wyatt Earp game? Uh, gotta love it here in Cali. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody put up a, uh, an image earlier today. It was a little meme image. It, it was like, it was like, Hey, Middle East, like here's America. And it showed California circled out of it. And then it said, uh, it had Canada above it. And then the rest of America said Canada also. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I got some other smalls. I picked these up as a gift for one of the kiddos in Fresno that I'm going to be going and seeing next week. I got a Joker and a Harley Quinn, and I paid uh, $3 for the pair. Same person that sold me the Stay Puffed Marshmallow. Uh, highly relevant commenter says, I saw that. Worth Point had it. What's Worth Point have it at? eBay had three sold? Oh, I must, you know what? I probably typed it in wrong. But yeah, if you have any information, that'd be fantastic. Thank you so much to the 48 of you who are here still. I also want to give a big shout out. I noticed we have a bunch of new subscribers. I don't know where any of you came from, but you've come in droves over the last week. We picked up nearly 100 new subscribers. Welcome to all of you. And if any of you know where that shout out came from or what happened, I'd love to know. I'm, ha I'm so happy that you guys are here. Please tell your friends and family about us. If you're out and you meet somebody that says, oh man, I, you know, I'd want to do that online selling. I just don't know how to do it. Direct them our direction. That's the only way we can grow. What we're doing is if people like you let other people know. But 1958 in the search. Mindy, I'm going to assume it's so bad you don't want to tell me <laughs> what it sold for. Yeah, let's find out really quick. Let's go ahead and do it together. We will do it together right now. Okay. 1958. Did you see that related search? God. I like how we, oh, these are uh, ended ones. Ugh, God, that's cheap. And they have the other stuff with it too. That is unfortunate. $3 in, I can't complain. At least I got the cards. 20 to 25 plus ship, 40 bucks. I'll take it. I'll take it. I've seen worse. Not going to complain on that one. Make the money where it comes. Uh, more of these tiny plush. This one's a Shopkins. Uh, and then a little T Y, little T Y. I, I, I like I said, I got a ton of them, and I got more from the other days too. Let's go ahead and pull up one item from the first day I went, and then that's going to be our last item for tonight. Uh, it's an item that I normally would not go after, and I'd have no interest in whatsoever. I went to one of the Amazon booths and Daniel was doing his little walk around looking at the electronics and the easy picking type stuff. Anyone can go through electronics and find value. And I realized how busy that table was and that section was. And I looked over and I saw the textiles, the purses and the backpacks and the, the fabrics and miscellaneous clothing. And what do I see? Oh, I see this beautiful. We're going to go ahead and actually this plastic isn't necessarily part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and rip it out of here right now. This beautiful Circo, which is a Target brand, Pirate Quilt, okay? Brand new, nice and bailed up, has its front and back cardboard. Guys, look this thing up on eBay right now. The cheapest one and only one available is $125. The completed sales on these are about 80 to 90, even 100 bucks on these darn Circo quilts. People want this quilt. I got this plus two other items that I'm gonna show next week for ten dollars ten bucks uh this i know what you're thinking you're like how much does that thing weigh this will ship cubic this is why we talk about cubic this is about a cubic four maybe a cubic five so my maximum ship cost is going to be about sixteen dollars and that's if it goes to the east coast if it stays here on the west coast this will ship for maybe nine to eleven dollars so it's not bad at all and i might even be able to compress this down a little bit further so this is a great little piece to pick up if you see high-end brand new circo branded quilts give them a look never know it might be worth something guys 
let's go in and have a moment here. Let's have a moment. Let's have a talk, me and you. This has been a challenging week for me. But you know what? It's a challenging week for everyone. Every week is going to be as hard as you make it. Those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I really find it important to use this platform for good. I'm so flippin' fortunate that I get to do this. It's, it's, it's so special that we get to have this experience together. So I find it important to try and do something good with it each and every week. Each week we have our final thoughts, like Jerry Springer's final thought. We talk about something important. This week we're going to be talking about something a little more taboo, something that most people don't want to talk about, something that most people will kind of skirt to the side. This week we're going to talk about something that's affected me, and we're going to be talking about mental health. And I know that that little bit of negative stigma that comes with it because people don't like talking about it. It's an uncomfortable thing to talk about. And some of you deal with certain issues, whether it be social anxiety or personal anxiety or just internal demons that you might be struggling with, uh, your own perception of reality or um, inability to sometimes trust people around you. I mean, mental health can manifest itself in any number of different ways, including depression, and uh, it's something that I do get messages about from time to time. I always want to let you know, I'm always accessible. I'm the most accessible uh, content creator you'll find out there. And if you want to talk to me about things that are going on with you or your family or your own personal feelings and thoughts and stuff, and you just want to go someplace where you can talk candidly, my line's always available. But I want to touch base on it because I know as a seller, there are certain things that we experience in ways that other people don't experience. We can find certain levels of depression or loneliness in this industry because of how isolating this job is. I could do this job day in and day out and never speak to anyone. I don't have to have conversation with the people that I work with at the swap meet and I can go to the thrift stores and buy and I can sell online when I'm by myself. I don't have to have that human contact. But it's important that you maintain human contact. Whether you use our group or another group or you have local meetups or something to that effect, make sure you keep the human contact going for yourself and talk with other resellers. Enjoy the community. That's what's there for. Post on the group. Ask people how their day is going if you want to know, if you just want to chat with somebody. But when it comes to mental health, it's important to understand a few things. Most times... And I do say that because we, unfortunately we live in a society where sometimes people aren't completely honest, but most times, most mental health issues are not avoidable. It's not something that the person can control. It's not something that they can turn on and turn off willy nilly. Sometimes people are just simply going to be more anxious people. It doesn't matter what you say or do to try and calm them down or help them better understand. But I'm just saying this so that maybe you might be more mindful of the person around you that might suffer from some type of mental health issue, okay? It's not that their anxiety is, makes them not want to spend time with you or not want to go out with you. It's that their anxiety makes them not want to go out at all or spend time with anyone, okay? If you're somebody who's suffering with some of these things, just remember the important things to do. Try and get sunlight, get outside and breathe some air every day, especially if you find yourself constantly cooped up. I'll walk downstairs and go outside usually three or four times a day. I used to be a smoker and go outside 10 times a day, 20 times a day, but now I only go out a couple of times a day, but it's important for me to do that. I try and find something to make my day a day of significance each and every day. If I get to 8 p.m. and I haven't done anything noteworthy, I'll stop everything I'm doing. I'll get in my car and I'll start driving. I'll drive until I see something that's interesting to me. Just something to make the day of value to myself. But just be understanding of the signs if you see them as well. Um, make sure you exercise. Okay? I know a lot of us don't want to. We don't feel we need to. We feel we're invincible and we're strong, but... Exercise is one of the best things that you can do for relieving stress and anxiety. And this job, especially when you're first starting out, is loaded with anxiety. Loaded to the brim with anxiety. Will this item sell? Did I spend too much? Will it sell before my rent's due? Okay. 
Do I need to list up something personal on mine? What happens if this person returns the item? What happens if they want to cancel the transaction? What happens if I spent the money already? Did I get the cheapest shipping option or am I throwing money away? It's riddled with anxiety if you allow it to be. But just remember, we're all going to make mistakes. The only reason that I sit here and make so few mistakes is because I have made all of the mistakes already. All the wrong shipping, all the bad buys, all the poor negotiations. I've been through those mistakes. Okay? It's a natural part of the process. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to struggle. We're going to have difficult days. We're going to have difficult periods in our life. But please don't compromise your own personal mental health and your own personal needs in order to gain another buck. Okay? This means truly nothing to me here on the side comparative to my own personal happiness. But just remember, those of you who are dealing with these things, there's always going to be somebody to talk to. Um, you know, and if you're feeling even darker thoughts, you know, just remember that there's National Suicide Awareness Hotline. If you ever need to call in and speak to somebody, and if you don't want to call there and you still want somebody to talk to, reach out to me. I'll call you. I don't care what time it is. Three o'clock in the morning, you need to talk to somebody? I'll call you, okay? We'll talk. There's always going to be somebody there. But just remember, just because we have been labeled with these issues, depression, anxiety, blankety-blank disorder, don't let that label become your identity. Don't let it be that this is who I am forever and this is the way that it has to stay. Always be willing to get stronger mentally, physically, emotionally. Be willing to get stronger. Be willing to become a better person. Okay? And as you grow stronger, make sure you extend your hand out and grab the next person down. Bring them on up with you too. Okay? That's what we're all here for. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to be here tonight. This has been the Sunday Reseller Roundup for January 5th, 2020. I want to thank all of you for being here. I think we had over 100 unique viewers tonight coming in. We have 48 live viewers, which is a record for us closing out the show. Okay? Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of our admins, all of our patrons, everyone and everything for making this possible. What a heck of a show we had tonight. Guys, we are going to be back next week. We're going to be doing both of our giveaways. We're going to get both of those done. Okay? And I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. We're going to have an exclusive video that's going to be premiering next Sunday. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I look forward to making it. Right? Thank you all for the wonderful comments. I see them all coming in right now. Yoga is definitely helpful. When wisdom comes through the hard road, that is true, my friend. Okay? Don't be afraid to take that long path. Okay? Nothing comes easy in life. And if it did, it wouldn't be worth having. Guys, this has been... The Sunday Reseller Roundup again for January 5th, 2020. Remember, if you don't make that money, someone else will. Have a wonderful night.